So I like to think that it's mostly it's mostly just like the truck driver he pulled up, but then he just went. Well, hello there. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Yeah. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you're going to take home with you. Yeah. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch, but there was something truly special about tailgating a dumb businessman in your dad's semi on the way to Blockbuster, <laughs> picking out a movie and watching it when you got home. Yeah. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me, as always, two dudes with a massive fear of truck stop bathrooms, Sean Pryor and AJ Vens, how the heck are you? Oh, the stories I have of truck stop bathrooms. Mostly it's uh, kind of fun to like walk in there and start peeing, but then there's like eight more truckers taking a shit. Yep. And the the cacophony and symphony of farts along with like Joe Walsh in the background. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, uh, well, I'll, I'll say it's interesting. I'll say that. In the shitty. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's basically what it is. And I also, there's uh, truck stops, bathrooms. They've had um, probably one of the best stories I've had is just meeting a man who really knew a lot about aliens. <laughs> he called them the Greys. Oh, yeah. That's how you know. And I think, and we found out that, and then he went to go get his binder from his truck, and we all left you, while he you was made the gone. right call. Yeah. Good call. So, yeah. <laughs> He's still hunting you down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this movie just turned really scary for AJ, because that's what this guy was doing. He's hunting him down. The Grays. No! Uh-huh. The Grays. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss a movie that made us all scared shitless of truck drivers. The first feature film that Steven Spielberg ever directed. Whoa. Our first movie that was the winner of a Primetime Emmy Award. Ooh. That's never happened. Wow. Summer Strange. of 70s rolls on with 1971's Duel. See what I said, rolls well, on. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, nice. it's time for another nostalgic <laughs> wow, journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. You get it? Real. Wherever you are in the world. Rolls on. Take it away, boys. I'll explain to you when it's over. Wheels. Wheels on. Yep. If you are new to this podcast, we're going to be reviewing Duel scene by scene with a modern eye, but in order to do that properly, we got to discuss it with pure MF and nostalgia. AJ, tell us the first time you ever saw this movie and what your nostalgic rating was before you went on to watch it for modern day. Yeah, so before I watched it for modern day, (laughs) I went on to uh, think that this was why I wondered why we were doing the Matt Damon (laughs) <laughs> Adam Driver classic from 2022, and then I've never seen this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never seen this movie, guys. Let's be real honest here. Well, the, do we need to? Do we really need to break this down? I, I've never seen it. I'm well, so. Sorry. I think it's very interesting because I'm also going to come out and say that I've never seen it. Have you ever seen it, Sean? Yes, okay, ma'am. so then then we'll save Sean. I I've never even. heard heard of this movie uh-huh. which is mind-blowing to me because you start to like read about it and, you, and you, you dissect it like we're doing on this show here yeah steven spielberg what are we talking about here how do i not even know about this movie so yeah i i'm a big na2 how about you man well, it makes me excited because i the, i think the one goal i want for this episode is to get people to see this movie agreed um but when i first saw it i was just uh I listen to a bunch of podcasts, and one of them is called Pure Cinema Podcast. And uh, I think they did an episode of like top five road movies or something like that, or like movies to do with cars. Um, and after that, I just delved deep into all of these kinds of movies, especially 70s uh, like uh, car movies. Smokey I guess. and the Bandit. Was yeah, that Smokey on the list? and the Bandit. Yep. I cool. mean, you know, that's that's like the pinnacle, I guess. But uh, you got Crazy Mary or Crazy Larry something Mary. <laughs> Uh, and Ride with the Devil. I love those movies. And so I just did all of those, and this was one of them. And uh, I love it. It, it. it 
created my fascination and love for the 70s car movie. It's one of my favorite subgenres of all time now. Uh, and uh, when I saw it, I loved it. I'm going to give it a 7.5. 7.5 for Sean. This was chosen by our executive producer, Starling. He kind of talked us into this one, actually. Yeah. Uh, we're like, oh, come on, what about Animal House or what about this? He's like, no, what about Duel? And so we let him make his choice, and what he said was, my assignment seemed simple. Pick a 1970s movie. But this <laughs> proved to be a difficult task. I couldn't waste my pick on a movie I'd never seen, which was just left me thinking about Smokey and the Bandit, and that's a big no for me, or The Bad News Bears. But I feel like that review would write itself. Nice. For me, yeah. movie viewings are very linear. I rewatch things, but I rarely go back in time for something unseen. Growing up without cable until college and always at the mercy of whatever our dad wanted to rent made this one tough. Side note, he would have totally picked Smokey. Nice. As I was about to give up, I remembered a movie that our whole family watched one Sunday afternoon, Duel. All I remember is my aunt saying, you know, this movie only has two lines of dialogue. It seemed mildly interesting <laughs> at the time, considering I had no say. And all I can remember was a desert, a leather briefcase, and an 18-wheeler, and a guy who seemed like he just couldn't get a win in life. I remembered that he was, he was a real nudge, and that I didn't <laughs> seem to root for him very much. I would say it was a five for me at the time. More interesting than I thought, but could care less if I saw it again. But it has always lingered in the back of my head, especially when Joyride came out. Candy cane. Yeah. So, so, gentlemen, I don't know what I got us into. I didn't even know this movie was directed by Steven Spielberg <laughs> until Sean mentioned it on the Patreon. Hope I'm not fired after this one, but I'm about to rest play. Here we go. Oh, wait, that's Mike's line. <laughs> so he gave it a five. So that's going to take us just Sean and Starling. That's a 6.25. You know, that's nothing special to write home with. That ties with the burbs nostalgically. Okay. Uh, weird, little little creepy, little, like, yeah, know, yeah, sort of what? scary, yeah. sort of ominous stuff going on. There, so, you know. so we are going to. our episode, the burbs, by the way. You should. It's 100%. Fun, it's a fun one. We are going to dissect this with a modern eye, but first we got to talk about all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean has got us covered. What do you got on Duel? Here we go. Produced by George Eckstein, written by Richard Matheson, cinematography by Jack A. Marta. Music by Bill Goldenberg, edited by Frank Morris, directed by Steven Spielberg. Cast, Dennis Weaver, Jacqueline Scott, Eddie Firestone, Lou Frizzle, Lucille Benson, Carrie Lofton, and Dale Van Sickle. Richard Matheson originally came up with the story of Duel when he was on his way home from golfing. Hi, Jay. <laughs> and he was <laughs> voraciously tailgated by a semi-truck. Matheson had attempted to pitch the idea to several stations for a television episode, but had no luck. So Matheson wrote it as a short story that was eventually published by Playboy. Hell yeah. Spielberg's assistant Playboy. found the story and presented it to him <laughs> and also mentioned that the story was being turned into a script for a television movie. Spielberg read and loved the short story and called producer George Eckstein, requesting that he hire him. Spielberg had only done TV episodes at the time, but Eckstein was impressed by what he saw. He brought in uh, specifically his episode of Columbo, which was the first episode of Columbo, and it hadn't even been released yet, and it and impressed him, and he gave him the job. The thing that was most attractive to Spielberg about the story was the ambiguity of the truck driver, only seeing his arm waving him on or just seeing the driver's boot. Very Hitchcock, is what Steven Spielberg said. When casting for the movie, Spielberg was surprised the studio let him come in and see actors for the role of David Mann. They had a spate of t uh, specifically television actors to choose from, and when Spielberg saw Dennis Weaver, he was starstruck because he knew him from the film Touch of Evil by Orson Welles. Spielberg realized it can't get any better than this, and so he hired the actor on the spot. Uh, I just like that he was like seeing these actors and was like, oh my God, Dennis Weaver. They're like, yeah, I guess he was good in like Gunsmoke or whatever. Yeah. He's like, no. like, did you see him in Touch of Evil? He's like, he's so crazy in it. And uh, he actually said... Like when uh, in Touch of Evil, his craziness, his level of craziness is what he wanted David Mann or David M Munn. Yeah, David Man. Mann to get to at the end of his movie. So Duel. easy. He's like, well, he can do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. The film was shot in Canyon County, Agua Dulce and Acton, California in 13 days, which was three days over its original 10 day schedule. 10 days for a feature length television movie. That's no props. crazy. Being on a low budget and very tight shooting schedule, Spielberg... Uh, had a lot of the chase scenes with uh, filmed a lot of the chase scenes with multiple cameras. He would use cameras on one side of the road with different angles. Then they would back the vehicles up and shoot the same thing from the other side of the road, getting much needed coverage as well as a comedy of shots. So it's basically what I said. It's you 
film this one uh, particular. Yep, going like, east to west. Yeah, yeah. Film that on one side. Get them back. Put the cameras on the other side. Get get your angles so right. It looks completely it different. Yeah. Looks completely different. Could wow. Because yeah, you are shooting like against like say a canyon, and then the other side is like. So mountains yeah, so in the it's background. it's a separate sh- scene that they're shooting. Pretty at that much point, right. That's amazing. Yeah, that's genius. Uh, Duel was released on ABC as the movie of the week on November twentieth, nineteen seventy one, and it was the eighteenth highest rated made for TV movie of the year. The film is also credited as the. M- as the movie that launched the career of one of our finest and most influential filmmakers of all time. That's what I got. Well, up next we go to AJ. He talks to us about the critical critics and the fanatical fans and gives us all their reviews and their ratings and, you know, that kind of stuff. He does do that. Stuff. Yeah. It's kind of what he does. Those kind of things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I certainly hope we don't get any too big of a splat at the end of this movie. Whoa. We're going towards <laughs> yeah. the tomato meter. Bruce. Nice. More like that. That's good. Yeah, That's right. good. Right. I like that. Cool. Yeah. We should put that in there. <laughs> All right. All right. It's already an MP3. I don't know how to change it. I don't it. know how to change it. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> 89% certified fresh on the tomato meter. You know what that's tied with? Any movie we've done, that is tied with Texas Chain Saw Massacre. Let's oh. go! In a row. That's nuts. Yeah. Right there, huh? Uh, I guess audiences ag- uh, almost agree with them. 84%. Okay. okay. IMDb is going to come in at 76 Tied Ooh. with planes, trains, and automobiles. Kind of another fun little coincidence there. Uh, Any yeah. movie we've done. A little, r- little nice. road movie there. Yeah. yeah. Scary. Yeah, at, at times, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, real scary. Yeah, uh, that that bathroom terrifying. scene with the water on the bathroom floor. Like, oh my terrifying. god, terrifying! The skeleton he yep. he turns into, right? <laughs> yeah, you're or right. like the evil <laughs> devil <laughs> guy. You're gonna get athletes foot walking into the bathroom. You know <laughs> you're going to get your get your water socks on. Uh, <laughs> guys, we always got to start with some critical reviews here. The Seattle Times, John Hartle. He said 100 out of 100. This expertly sustained 1971 suspense classic established Steven Spielberg's reputation as a director. That's what he had to say about it. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, guy. Yes, it did. Talking about Steven. Spielberg. Oh, Spielberg. He's so young. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> young Spielberg. <laughs> Loved his early stuff. His, oh. his late stuff was okay. Quite a <laughs> departure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it takes... Uh, this is this is the Guardian, Scott, uh, Scott Tobias. 90 out of 100. He says, It takes less than a minute of watching Duel, Steven Spielberg's feature-length debut, to realize you're in the hands of a master director. We get it, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> He's really good, okay? I did really like this one, actually. So this is uh, Mitchell Bupre. Ooh. I hope I said that right. Uh, this is a film stripped back to its bare essentials, and Spielberg thrives in having, uh, in having to get creative to make each moment feel as fresh and energized as the last. And he does certainly do that. Uh, and then let's jump on over, guys. We get it, Spielberg. Uh, uh, we're, I want to do some, uh, some 10s real fast. So 10 out of 10, quintessential Spielberg. <laughs> it's like, it, it's like AJ, you know that you're leading this no. one, right? It's like the section. This is bullshit because this is like no, none of these people said this when this movie came out. You're damn right. Uh, They're we, like, Who's we get it. Jurassic guy? Park. Oh, yeah. oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll go on to do great things. Oh, Schindler's List. I liked, it, bef- Ryan, I liked uh, it before he was popular. Uh, it's so derivative. <laughs> um, uh, quintessential Spielberg Spielberg cinematic vision summed up in a nutshell we get it Uh, but I do want to say this one Uh, I I thought this one was kind of on point for us Uh, it's 10 out of 10 the video store's best kept secret said Texas gal 1976 in 2000 she said you want to see horror see duel this film is a nightmare for anyone who has a driver's license (laughs) what scares me about this film is not an 18 wheeler uh is not that an 18-wheeler is trying to run a business man off the road. What is scary is that due to Spielberg's precise direction, the driver of the 18-wheeler remains unseen throughout the entire film. The film gives me chills just thinking about it. The movie is definitely one of Spielberg's best films, and it will amaze me that it it will amaze me that it was made for television and not the silver screen. Mm. So I think that's a good point. 
Uh, let's talk about it, guys. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, one, one, one out of ten. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Warning. Spoilers. Two thousand three. Biggie Smalls had this to say. Came back for just this. Wow. Uh, I can't believe this film has got so many good reviews. It's such a masterpiece. What is wrong with you people? All the time I watch this thinking something is going to happen. And I wait and wait until two hours later the truck driver dies and the film is over. <laughs> I've got one word for films like this. Awful. <laughs> I'd give it a zero if it was a choice. It, 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 <laughs> it came back and dropped another heater of a song, man. That was some good <laughs> lyrics right there, Biggie. Damn. <laughs> You put a beat behind that? <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah. Here's, here's, you guys know what I'm talking about. Here's know? the first. Here's hip hop. You guys like hip hop? Go ahead. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> One out of ten. I'm just going to read you the first part of this. Boring and predictable. There it is. 2005. A boring man gets chased through a boring desert by a boring truck. <laughs> This is not a deep, intense psychological thriller. It's the same scene played out over and over and over, in parentheses, again. <laughs> what is that even? Man gets chased by a truck, then he escaped. Truck comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. All right, kind of, but shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Last one here, guys. So boring. Said... Uh, ELS pet him mm. July 31st 2001 believe it or not I had to sit through a half hour of this movie in a TV class in college I was so happy when it was over I can't believe we're supposed to be interested in some idiot who can't get away from a truck driver <laughs> and a truck driver that has so much time on his hands that he can follow and terrorize someone doesn't he get paid by the mile <laughs> Shouldn't he be picking up more loads? Do yourself a favor and get Smokey and the Bandit if you want to see a 70s trucking. Look movie. at that. He's just concerned about all the petroleum and <laughs> all mean, the all the fuel that needs to get to where it needs to go. There's a gas shortage going on. <laughs> it you know? is. Would it's you true. please stop interrupting the, the, the chain, okay? The supply chain needs you. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. Signed guy who doesn't work in film. Signed guy. Yeah. <laughs> Trucker Dave. <laughs> Well, my friends, before we jump into this movie scene by scene, we got to give some love to a sponsor. Today's episode sponsor is Every Plate. They're back, and we're so happy. Every Plate provides plenty of delicious variety so you'll never get stuck in a cooking rut with 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week, including 15-minute or less dinners and dinner-to-lunch dishes. It's easy to find something flavorful and satisfying for every meal today. Plus, even add more delicious options to your order with up to 22 convenient sides, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Uh, one thing I've loved doing with Every Plate actually in the past couple weeks here is is cooking more than i would actually eat right so like i would essentially have leftovers for lunch the next day you're saving a lot of money you're saving a lot of time they must have read my mind because now they have these dinner to lunch dishes mm. they're tasty filling meals for both dinner and lunch the next day each recipe is carefully crafted to ensure the ingredients can be easily repurposed so you won't feel like you're just eating leftovers plus save some time on lunch on busy weekdays make the most of work like get all your work done at dinner next day is ready to go they got new favorite recipes such is sweet soy chicken tacos, chicken stir fry, chicken sausage, flatbreads, tomato pasta, all available uh, for a slight upcharge for a limited time only. You got to check that out. Seriously, it's a life changer. After being pretty skeptical about this type of stuff, I've gone on record saying, like, screw that meal plan stuff. Like, I can just order DoorDash, I can do whatever. I'm completely sold on cooking at home with every plate, which is now owned by our friends at HelloFresh, by the way. Yeah. Makes it even better. I look forward to making meals. I feel like a hero in my household. And I'm very much on a saving money kick and a saving time kick right now. And this shit just gets me amped. That's how I know I'm old. I'm like, I just made a meal. I <laughs> saved money. I'm a hero. Well, and a I just go. stand there and I'm like, yeah, fucking love this shit. Every play is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping with no hidden fees. So you can count on great value week after week. Plus only pay for what you need with pre-portioned ingredients. The meals are 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. 
I mean, come on. They're the easiest way to eat affordably. Put your money to that. Put all the savings towards something you want to do. Make some fall plans. Go to some football games. Go on a vacation. Do something fun. Save up for Christmas by eating good. These type of savings is what sets every plate apart from everyone on the meal kit market. There's a lot, and these guys are the best. Get $1.49, $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast, entering code 49confused. Remember, $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast, entering code 49confused. Come on. It's like a $110 value. It says it right here. Yeah. That's well, insanity. They wouldn't say it. And you'll be a hero. Enjoy. Do it. I don't remember the last time I went grocery shopping. Who does Literally that? Literally just leftovers with, with this stuff. Yeah. We can cut that out if you need. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Let's no. leave it in and then let's all awkwardly sit here. Okay. <sighs> Well, my dudes, there's nothing like a drive down an American highway. Mm. Windows down, radio elp, up, elp. Uh. Radio elp. Yeah, you just got to put the radio elp. Elbow. See, that's where I was going. Radio radio up, elbow out the window, casually taking in the beautiful scenery as you pass it by. It's peaceful. It's relaxing. It's entrancing. Hell, maybe we'll even get a chance to pull over to a truck stop and mingle with the laid back, kind, and loving truckers that this country was built upon. Yeah. Just local folks. Just local good folks yeah. making a difference in America, doing some hard day's work, hauling stuff around the U.S. Yeah. I sure hope this goes well. Same. Buying Here we beer. go. So scene one, David Mann drives away from Los Angeles on a business trip. He encounters a slow-moving tanker truck, which he eventually very nicely passes. Soon after, the truck roars past him and then returns to its slow-moving speed. Mann passes the truck for a second time. A few miles down the road, he pulls into a gas station. The truck follows, but he never gets a glimpse of the driver. After calling his wife, he sets out on his way again. Can I mention that I'm a huge Grand Theft Auto fan? Yeah. And Grand Theft Auto Five, especially, like I still play it. This this like entire intro feels like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, <laughs> it looked like every road they're on. I'm like, that's in Grand Theft Auto. It, it looks like he literally leaves the middle of the town, goes up on that northeast highway, and then ends up in like the town where what's his face it lives, like the small country town. Yeah, it's in. It's almost as if they designed that world after this intro to this movie i wouldn't be surprised and yeah. it's also that like front front facing camera that you can like switch to in grand theft auto yeah, yeah. you know yeah it, it's it's definitely on the bumper yeah not like up here it's down here <laughs> right and you're like so i don't know good. why i want to play this video game but man is it really intense <laughs> <laughs> i've never driven a car from six inches <laughs> off the road but i want to right now it's like a go-kart yeah it's fucking well, awesome also, like, yeah. speaking of grand theft auto he almost takes out two ladies i know <laughs> like, walking across the street <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It feels very like at any moment something like that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> this is the guys, this is an intro for me. We bang on intros all the time, good ones, bad ones. Like if you're going to do it and you're going to draw something out, do it like this. Yeah. yeah. This is so perfect. Like it, like I'm looking at stuff. I'm listening to things. I'm reading the stupid names of everyone involved with the movie because mm -hmm. we have to play them before, not after. <laughs> right. And like but I'm like I'm into it. I from the minute it started I'm like cool it's going on oh okay. oh cool. yeah i'm surprised uh, where are we going i'm surprised you like this intro i like it a lot i, I think i think the the lack of like uh uh score music mm -hmm. for this intro is really cool i think it's like really ominous like what are we doing like what who's our main character we don't even know yet you know and then you just get these this radio pumping in stuff um, I think it's really ominous, and I think it's like I was excited. Yes. Once this started, I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I don't, I for <laughs> forgot about this. You like know? nothing's happening, but you're just like something's gonna happen. Yeah, something's gonna happen. <laughs> something's gonna happen. It's something's gotta happen, right? I I did find myself uh, during this movie a lot, like kind of thinking that like, okay, well, what's I guess uh, I don't know, maybe there's not nothing's gonna happen. Oh wait, what just happened? Oh, uh, no, nothing's really happened. Wait a second. <laughs> no. Did wait you a second. AJ, no. did, are you like me? Because like we both have never seen this. So did you do any preliminary research on no. this at all? Did you put it on? No, I just put it on. So you were like me. I I actually had to rewind like two different times to be like, oh, wait, did he, he pass that truck? Oh, this is the same truck that he passed? Wait, did he do something bad to that truck? Like, yeah. it's just so it eases into this. So to where you don't even know it's a problem. Yeah. He passes that truck. Oh, God, this truck. Uh, get away. Okay. Like, I mean, it's not this like... 
tension-filled moment of, right. uh-oh, here's our antagonist. Uh-oh. Here he no. is. It, it just it just nice and easy just drives by it, and then nothing nothing kind of yep. happens. Yeah, well, and especially after this intro where it's just like literally, literally lulling you into a, a false sense of security, <laughs> you know? And then, like, the it's kind of convenient also when he, he's listening to the uh, radio station that he yeah. changes it right when he hears the hemorrhoids commercial. He's like, nah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't need that. Maybe don't not listen yet. to your That's listen true. to your problems, okay, David. You know, you know, just do something about it. Just and be do fine. something about it. You'll be more comfortable in that seat. But yeah, this is the worst. You know, you pass somebody and then they pass you back. You know, like I I drive for a living, for just kind of a straight truck, and I, I know I'm a little slower than a lot of people, especially going up hills. Maybe yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, you pass someone and then they Each pass the you grade. back. It's like I'm going to pass you again. Will you just be patient? Yeah. And and just stay behind me for a sec. I will speed up. Please, I promise. I, I know our antagonist is, or sorry, our protagonist is David, and he's in like a little Pinto car or whatever. I don't even know what this like is, it. but yeah, I don't know. I, that even like how this movie is uh, like a suspenseful ride, especially once we start getting to this action. It's uh, also kind of nerve wracking just seeing those mundane moves happen in traffic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that. That like it irks me even just watching that. I like that. I like what you said about um, how it kind of lulls you into this. It kind of just takes you in, and nothing, nothing, nothing uh, obscure or crazy is happening. But you can, if you're paying attention to this, you can feel this tension build as slow as it is, mm-hmm. and you're just like, there's even tension when you're gonna pass somebody on a two lane mm-hmm. road like that. You know, you're looking to see if there, you know, if there's a pass zone. Is it a pass zone? Well, is there a car coming though? Still. And then you finally make your move, and you're like, "Oh, okay, yep, yep, thanks. I just just get, trying to get by you. Yeah, got to be somewhere." And and to watch that happen again, where it's just like that pass by again, you're just like, "Okay, well, that's kind of a that's kind of a dick move." <laughs> yeah. All right, well, maybe he'll go faster. You're not going faster. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You know that kind of stuff because I feel like I feel like this is it's a very good way to do it because. You're not adding a bunch of tension-filled music. You're not mm. letting the music drive anything. Yeah, it's like well, he yeah. looks. He looks in his rearview mirror, nothing. He looks up again. Trucks there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like, oh. No, none, none of that. <laughs> he closes. He cl- <laughs> closes the medicine cabinet in the in the, yes. in, the in the bathroom of the gas Moves. station. Like. Oh. <laughs> He's in the mirror now. Moves the rearview mirror to see himself in those tight <laughs> yeah. glasses he's wearing, and then he puts it back. No, <laughs> it's it, dude. You're absolutely right. Like it does not. You're like you're like David Mann going. What the what the fuck? Because it's such I a mundane anything? thing to do. You're Why just, is he doing this? It's just oh, a whatever. Normal, I'll just pass him again. It'll be fine. It's just a normal drive. Nobody gets in their car thinking or like like gets in their car. Oh, I got to go out to this client meeting. We find out later. I've got to save the save the account, you know. It's like ah, I just got to drive on out there. He's probably made a similar drive like a oh, yeah. hundred times. He's not looking at maps. He knows where this is. Yeah, exactly. He's been out there. He's before. been out there before. Yeah. So when you when you have when you drive like that's like me driving down to my parents, which is like an yep. hour away. Yep. And on that stretch of highway, all of a sudden somebody just starts completely dicking with you, mm-hmm. and you're like, this should never happen. It's never happened to me before. What's every, going on? Every person listening has had some moment where this something like this has happened. I'm not saying like a fucking serial killer is coming after you in a truck, but you've accidentally pissed off a trucker or or you've pissed off someone else in the car and road rage ensues. You've had this happen. It yeah. is a terrifying on both sides. When you get the road rage and you're like, I'm just going to get this guy. Like, that's a terrifying moment. <laughs> it's also terrifying when it's happening to you and you're like, settle the fuck down, dude. Yeah. What did I do? Jeez. And then five minutes later, it goes away. Yeah. I, w- I would like, as a truck driver myself, I would like a reversal of this where it just seems like everybody is in a hurry <laughs> and they're causing accidents all around truck drivers. And truck drivers are trying to get out of the way. It's like a Tucker and Dale kind of thing yep. versus evil where they're, you know, they're around the kills that happen, but people suspect them. But but they're just the nicest people because we are. Yeah. And I want to say that this is pretty pretty racist against truck drivers. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. You know, I know you don't see him. I don't. You don't see. Well, I guess he's white. We could say that. I guess. Yeah, I guess. But I'm just saying, we're not all like this. Okay. We're usually pretty nice. We usually want you to pass us. We usually want want you to get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fair. I think that is. Can I get a witness? <laughs> no. No, I, this truck driver. No way, man. No <laughs> witness here. I do. I do think that that would be uh, honestly more honest because, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. truck drivers don't want to. 
Truck drivers do not want to burn fuel that fast. <laughs> no. Okay? I don't care if you're hauling a whole tank, like, souped up that you get access to. Yeah, everyone knows that the gas tank, actually, from the tanker, just goes right into the gas yeah, tank. Yeah, it's yeah. an extent- extension tank. He siphons himself. You yes. never have to pull up for gas. Exactly. No. Uh, so, but I think it'd be a lot more honest, because... Truck drivers do not burn fuel like that. You think they're going to go that fast uphill? Nope. No, no way. They're not going to overheat that thing. And then on top of that, like, it's like, oh, yeah, there's this. There goes that fast little red car. Son of a bitch. Like, well, somebody must be in a hurry. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Oh, my God, he's back. Ah, Jesus, he's zipping all around me. It's like, it's like a fly. Ah. It is. Yeah, it really is. What do you guys think about the look of the truck? I think it's very menacing, and uh, and I I I had to look it up afterwards, and I was like, "There's some unique features to this," and um, the the front end of this truck, like when you see that in her, in his rear view mirror, like there is something very very menacing about mm-hmm. it. Didn't they didn't they choose this on purpose? Yeah, because I, it it really has some personification qualities. Yeah, to it, they, right? he literally like did a casting call for <laughs> trucks. Like he oh, had a like yeah. yes. Yeah. Like, he, like they brought out like an, a, right. in a huge parking lot. Yeah. Now pop your hood. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Spielberg, pop your hood. Okay. Do you want the job or not? <laughs> I'm willing to pay you five thousand dollars a day. If you pop your hood right now. I like when you talk to me and you're you're playing the world's smallest violin. Yes. Like even in any any complaint, you're just still doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pop, pop that hood. Pop that hood. Now show me your tailpipe. <laughs> show me. <it. laughs> what's your what what's your hall capacity? <laughs> That's a little personal, isn't it? Not in here. <laughs> I'm gonna need to know everything about you. Okay, Peter? Bill? <laughs> um, but like he literally had like a parking lot full of trucks to look at and they were all like a lot of them were like the snub nose ones you know yep. what i'm talking about oh, where yeah. like the oh, engine sure. is like like right below the driver i oh, imagine yeah, yeah. but then he saw this one it's got like the protruding almost it looks like a he's it's got eyes and it's got a mouth on the grill mm. and uh it looks like a monster and he, I know he definitely wanted it to be red because it, they were filming in California, and he wanted it to stand out. The car, right? Uh, the truck as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, Both of them to kind of. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The. I think you're right. I think it is actually I think the, the car. Well, I knew it was. I knew that's true about the car. Okay. But he wanted he wanted things that are going to stand out against this Which like the like truck the canyons. Does too. And yeah. yeah, and the truck does too because it's like I, I think they just ended up making it dark and just. Like deteriorating, yeah, you know? just just disgusting, it's right? Just, just been out forever, yeah. I, but I, so when you think of truck driving movies like this, you think of obviously Joyride. Starling mentioned it. That's like I saw that in the theater, right? You know, Candy King. Uh, but but the difference in this is that this movie really makes this truck. You know that you know, we know there's a man driving it. We've seen his arm. We know he, that he's walking around. But like by the end of the movie, you really think of it as like its own thing. Kind you of think ex- of this truck as like being alive, yeah. Where that, that's not the case in Joyride. That is just a, a weapon to this psycho trucker. This is just like, I mean, is that truck supernatural? What's going on here? Even towards the end, and and I remember watching it. I'm like, I think he goes down there and looks and sees nobody or something. I I thought I remember that in my head when the first time I watched it, but uh, I mean, obviously he doesn't do that. But still, it feels like that. It feels like yep. Sometimes there's somebody there. Like maybe David just sees an arm. Or something. Right. I don't know. You know, it just it does. It really creates a lot of menace towards this thing, and, and makes you fear it, like as an object. All right, it, a future idea for a movie here. You do Duel. You remake Duel, but set in the year twenty one hundred when it's self driving trucks. Oh yeah. So it's an AI truck that just going off the rails. Now that's scary. There we go. That see. Now that's I'm scary. pretty scary about that, yeah, man. Okay, I like that. you heard it here first. There you go. I also kind of do it, Mike. If you would, I want because he does. He's listening to the radio and he's listening to something. He's like, uh, I play meat. Oh man, that, he's like he reacts. He's like, oh man, that's sick. I want you to like put our an episode of our podcast over it, <laughs> and like we say a joke or something like yeah. that. He's like, oh man, that's, that's sick. sick. I can do that. I can do that. Right? No <laughs> big you. deal, man. Thank you. Cool, uh, cool. At first, you think it's like, oh, it's very menacing that there's this like like you're saying like this truck that we aren't sure somebody's driving it, and then we find out that there there is. He sees somebody eventually like kick the tires on it, kick the uh, kick the uh, gas tank thing. At the bottom, we never get to see his face, and that's somehow worse that yep, there is agreed. something that there is a, a person out there that you 
you there's no payoff to it. They know what you and look it, like. Yeah, it it kind of yeah they know what you look like, but you can't identify them in nope. any capacity, and that's pretty that's pretty uh, unsettling. Mm-hmm. I guess is the way, word I would choose. Um, there's also it's also like the all the license plates on the front uh-huh. um, was probably one of my favorite things because when I saw that I kept thinking about like why does he have a bunch of license like that's not legal you know <laughs> you're at first you're just like no nobody's gonna let that you're happen pulled over yeah it's like you can't call those hood ornaments okay my first question mm-hmm. is. Where are you from? Yeah, where are you from? <laughs> where are you coming from? Where are you going? All right. Hello. Licenses and registration, please. Licenses and registration. Okay, here's uh, Nevada, Nevada and New Utah. Mexico, and Utah. <laughs> well, did you did you at all, in any way, shape, or form, think that in a way those were his victims? See, that's what I'm thinking, and that's what I've that's what I've heard, but I didn't know, and I was like, that would be. I I want that to be a known thing. Yeah, like I want that to be it. Well, unfortunately, uh, so this movie was filmed in 1971. It was a legal requirement for interstate semi trucks to display plates from multiple states in order to legally drive interstate as prior to 1974. So, oh. so most states would not allow you to do commercial operations from state to state to state. So this thing. is like it's almost like before electronic logs and stuff yes. for semis yes okay. uh, and in fact some of the, I, you probably saw this some of them the new new mexico plate says hup highway use permit arizona says int it means interstate uh wyoming nevada says mc which is motor carrier so like that's that's really what's going on but man i sure do love the idea that those were all that's what victims I love. that that I, truck has killed i want I, i'm just saying that it is that anyway okay. because i stamp it i like oh, no, it no, no dude okay we're in so they really are he started off with just a nevada plate but all these other ones are ones he've killed that he's just like oh yeah i'm interstate i drive interstate yeah yep i yeah. just do that well, and then, yeah, I mean, it's true, too, because I, I can't go to Illinois. We have stops in Illinois. I can't bring my big truck to Illinois for some for the commercial reason. Um, but, you know, I, I think now they just have, like, a, it it's in your company. And then on your license, I think, is, like, you, you are able to travel across state lines. Mm. Um, but now I think I am, because of this movie, tr- going to, like, get some <laughs> license plates and put them on yeah. my truck. Just, just to be menacing and get people out of my way. I like that a lot. Yeah. Sean yeah. accidentally ends up covering his headlights. It's just like, oh crap! Okay. Uh, no, <laughs> damn it! Shit. The last touch I do really like is that I, I did have to read it because I was like, that's, I don't, I don't, I didn't know what it was, but then I read that it's a, it's a railroad, um, like a piece of a railroad on the front as the front bumper of oh, that okay. car, and I'm like, that would do some damage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would do some hardcore damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just thought that was another like nice touch of like this like menacing looking yeah. truck. Before we move on to scene two, uh, what what do you think about this scene at the gas station? Right, because I'm sure you know a little bit more about this, Sean. Where they, it was originally a TV movie, mm-hmm. and so it was it was only 74 minutes long or something like that. But uh, you know, because what an hour and a half movie on television with commercials. But they so they had to add scenes, and this was one of them that they added. Man, and I'm telling you, it it I like that they added this because it it really f- has this weird menacing feel to it with the way the camera is. Yeah, especially when that camera's way in the back, looking down the hallway at him. You think at any minute, like truck driver's gonna come walking in, like Home Alone, South Bend shovel slayer style. Like you think he's gonna right. walk in behind him, and he doesn't. And then you've got the lady in the foreground with her really flabby arms yeah. doing laundry. Like <laughs> yes. it's I don't know, man. And it adds. We'll talk about it a little later, but it sure does add a little bit of a backstory to man too. Yeah, and I, with that shot too of the lady doing laundry, it's like it's cool that he just locks it off and he yes. just lets David do his thing, and you kind of get like a shot. Uh, in to like the door of the laundromat. It's just kind of a cool looking shot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I really agree that it's like it adds a lot of humanity to our main character, and we like him even more because obviously he's got a family to go back to, and he he it's it's a little more urgent for him now because he does have a timeline. He yes. needs to get back and do this or be with his wife. You know, um, how I, how else would we have learned about him going on a business trip? Right. I don't know how we would have learned that. But also, it kind of excites me. And I know, actually, I think eventually they are going to release... There's like a Blu-ray coming out, cool. I believe, of the theatrical and TV cut. Oh, It'd be interesting to see it just be 
kind of like a, a silent movie with no dialogue and just have our main character be menaced by this thing with oh, you know shit. really no backstory. It'd be kind, a little interesting to see, maybe even creepier for me. But I do because I like Dennis Weaver so much as this character. I like seeing him in, in this backstory as well. He also it also gives the uh, kind of beaten down vibes of yeah. kind of what's going on too. You know, he's having these this this uh, spat with his wife, and we find out that like. It, it, a lot of this backstory and a lot of the as we as we say not not necessarily spoon fed um, feelings and vibes of this movie is especially from the story told over the radio uh, during this time of a man calling in. It's like a comedy bit mm, yeah. on on over the radio, right? And he's this this story is about this guy calling into the Census Bureau saying, "Well, if you're the." Uh, you know, head of the household. It's like, well, my wife's the head of the household. And it's basically kind of this emasculating yep. story, if you will. And then you have this where he goes in and he talks to his wife, uh, calls his wife to apologize. We find out that his wife was like kind of, uh, I don't know, like almost like assaulted or almost like in front of yeah. his, uh, his friends and other I mean, people. And he didn't kind of step up to it. So there's this kind of this whole emasculating process that David feels very down like uh cut down i guess mm -hmm. you know what i mean as his as you say like his manhood and stuff man yeah yeah and then like oh. when he eventually does Two ends. like try and take control or want to take control of the situation you know right. that's kind of a, a, a good motivation for it yeah it's interesting yeah well, let's move on to scene two. So not much further down the road, the truck approaches him from behind and passes. Continuing to drive slow, man attempts to pass the truck, but it swerves and won't allow him to pass. After much effort, he eventually is able to pass on the side of the road and leaves the truck behind. However, he's shocked to see the truck pull up behind him at high speed. The truck outruns man's car and begins to bump into him. Eventually, he swerves off the road and exits his car and gets out and goes to a diner. It's always it's always funny to me, like in these movies, like, dude, you like Sean just said, you pass somebody like go, mm -hmm. like, just go. I know this truck is speeding, but at this point you're dealing with a f psycho mm -hmm. like just go, dude. Well, yeah. I do like the the little lines and just stuff, go. too, of like him being like, oh, it must be souped up, you know, because I'm I'm saying to myself while, to while watching this, I'm just like you have like that thing. Your car will Ooh. outrun any semi yes. in existence, you know. But then he says it must be souped up, and I, I have to imagine yes, it is because he just keeps catching up to him. You know, um, I, I, I think it's like incredibly tense because even today, even like knowing that this is like 1971, I'm just like, just call the cops from your cell phone, dude. <laughs> like I'm thinking that in my mind, but like you can't do it. Nope. Like you have to at least wait till you get to a gas station or a diner or whatever and use a payphone to call anybody. You know, like yeah. there's no and a, like a lot of the time if you're driving. Sometimes there's not many places to stop along the way. Like it could be an hour or two hours before you see anything, you know. Yeah, uh, I I think about uh, the 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 whole I interaction, I guess, between these two up to this point. Um, well, what was I gonna say? Like, if if you're going to if you're gonna like try to find a place to pull off, or or this keeps happening to you, you do start to justify things to yourself and i feel like that's what a lot of his dialogue is mm. it's like this like it, it's like this internal justification of like why why is this happening to me and again it just kind of goes back to you when you have an, an antagonist that has no explanation and to us essentially no face other than the front of his truck and we say like we've said before something that can't be reasoned with you can't reason with the front of that truck mm -hmm. right and so it's all this interesting justification. And originally he was supposed to have like his wife with him in the oh, side. Wow. Mm. And so that was supposed to add the exposition and the context Do something. of, of them going back and forth. They're like, well, what's he want? I don't know what he wants. Well, what is it? What's his truck doing this? So I can't you outrun him? Well, I can't outrun him. He must be souped up. Mm. They didn't do that. Instead, they thought Spielberg thought it would be better. Uh, maybe Matheson as well. Uh, but uh, Matheson, Matheson, Matheson. And he's like said, maybe, maybe, uh, it would be better and add to that anxiety if it was just him having to deal with this by himself yeah. and justify it to himself or or rationalize it himself. I think it's so much better. Yeah, I, I don't think I would like that if, if that ah, was the what's case. What's going on? 
what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Well, you Why know, aren't you driving faster? Yeah, it, yeah, it could be that. You know Maybe I mean? they <laughs> shot some of it, and and it was like I'll take the blame on that. One. <laughs> like I know, I know, watching like uh like being a passenger in my family's car. When my dad's driving and my mom is in the passenger seat, and anytime there was something, so it's like, <gasps> <laughs> oh, you mean the deer ten thousand yards ahead of us? <laughs> oh! what, what? 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 There's a deer four miles ahead. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tap taps brake lights going thirty five miles an hour. <laughs> oh God! You get mom arms yeah. fucking hard. <laughs> Sean. Sean, like, he, was, he was barely in front of me. He's not even doing anything. It's like, like that's definitely what happened, right? That, they saw a lot of that, and they're like, "All right, let's get <laughs> all right." No, let's we didn't put him in the car. We didn't want we didn't want audio stings to add to this. Uh, we got to pull her out. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's, it's like human audio stings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, like I, even like the anxiety of watching this happen too. Like and and being a driver, not even just a truck driver, but just a, a driver in general, uh, riding along the highway or wherever, and it's like shit like this happens to you. Like you've had those days where you're just like everybody pulls out in front of you, mm-hmm. or you hit every red light every on the way light, home, yeah, or whatever is happening. And sometimes, like I imagine, I, I being in David's shoes, I'm just like, is it me? I know. <laughs> like, What's it's happening? A, it's to a me. Truman Show moment yeah. where you're like, "Is is this real? There's is this cameras Truman on Show? me. Right? There's cameras on me right now, right? Like, like somebody's messing with me. Yeah. At this point, somebody's got to be messing with me at this point, especially because it it, it, it as as we kind of see when he's going through these places and when he's especially especially when he gets to the diner, you know, everybody's looking at him like he's crazy. You know, everybody is whether it's in his head or not is. See, feels against him, yeah. untrusting of him. True. You know what I mean? Like, there's never anybody who like really trusts him. But then at the same time, he's not really given a lot no. either. Yeah. You know, and so it that's that's that kind of uh, you know you know buck up and boot pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality, if you will, of like uh, of. I'll just deal with it myself and internalize it, and yeah. I'll just bottle up these emotions and not feel anything, right? There's probably also a class, <laughs> uh, like a working class thing going on here, though, yeah. too, because he's he's coming into small town. Sure. He's got, he's a, got nice a tie car. on, a nice car. He's yeah. not working. He's not working. Right. These guys are all working. They're just on their lunch break. You know, yeah. he's like, oh, what's he doing? He's, he's driving to meet a client and take their money or something right. like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. So there is a little bit of a of a rich, poor, blue collar, white collar thing maybe going That's on true. there too. Yeah. There's also some. Interesting. I wish I had written it down, but I had read that I couldn't figure out why he decided to pass that one time right when cars were coming, like the worst time. I'm re- I'm really good at passing on two lane highways. <laughs> like no, Mike's I'm just always saying, got I'm, places to you be. You guys, it's hey, true. we've driven before. You saw oh, me yeah. make a couple passes, like you felt safe. You you know? Well, you, sure. <laughs> It's fine. It's Here, fine. Sean, hold my beer. You're, I gotta, I gotta you're really good. You're really good. Anyway, he he makes that really poor pass maneuver when uh, cars coming out. Uh-huh. I was like, what are they doing? Apparently, the the no passing lines and stripes on the road mm-hmm. weren't a thing until like the late seventies. Oh. So it didn't it didn't tell you that okay, yeah, I know you can't see, but you're you're good to pass here mm-hmm. or whatever kind of a thing. So yeah, he's just uh, uh, you know just yeah. kind of just made the move because he sees a he sees a pass zone or pass zone ahead or something like sign that, yeah. kind of a thing. <laughs> but, but those, you're right, those it's broken not white lines and the solid white lines yeah. or whatever right. they weren't there. Those aren't there. Or yellow yeah. lines, I guess. So it's are, like yeah. you aren't sure when it's gonna really exactly. End. Yeah, you're right. Well, and it's also too like be, I'm mentioning it again, uh, but being a truck driver too, where it's just like sometimes I imagine when people are like in a hurry or trying to get by me or something like. Or like when people don't get over into the right lane when people want to pass them, you know they have the worst kind of people. That's yep. the worst, and I yep. feel like it's just kind of that mentality of like just driving in town and like, oh well, I just drive and everything good happens to me, you know, whatever. Leap like me. I feel like people are like that sometimes, and maybe David kind of has that like kind of businessman driving in in you know uh, uh, like a big city. Probably he does not really know the the ins and okay. outs of like. Trying to pass a truck, or you know, being uh, a friendly driver to somebody, you know, like when truck drivers we flash people when they can pass, and yeah. they should know that. But uh, I think that that also goes to play in it with that. Yeah, and maybe I'm being racist against non-truck drivers. Oh, you might be. Yeah, um, it's definitely your mo. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know, 
you're, uh, al- you're allowed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you don't you don't appreciate the people who are different than you. Like, Those you people. Know, you're non truck yeah. drivers. Yeah, I don't so. like them. Uh, but <laughs> but. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, but it is true, and that's why I, that's why I mean, like, you know, you just get used to driving your same routes every day. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're a nine to if you're a nine to fiver, uh, like Monday through Friday, uh, you know, gotta work sometimes here, sometimes there. Sometimes I try, I sometimes I drive over to Bloomingdale, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you gotta just kind of go over there about mm-hmm. every other week. That's just to pick up mower parts, right? Right, know? and that like that's what you do, and you're just along for the ride how i mean well maybe i shouldn't admit this but how many times let's be honest guys you're like driving you're driving i knew we were gonna get there sometime you're driving you're driving along, you, you, you drive along. <laughs> and like you just like all of a sudden you just uh you just come out of it like when was the last time I actually just looked at the road? <laughs> yeah. How did I get here? Like, oh, shit. How far have I driven? Oh, I definitely missed my exit. Like, oh, yeah. Was, I've been trying to pick a different song on Spotify for I don't know how long. Like, you just like, oh, man. Somehow your peripheral vision has become like Spider-Man's, you think, or something. Yes. And you're just like, like, you've zoned out for I don't know how long, and you're just like, Jesus, it's been like six minutes since I really focused like directly in front of me. You know what I mean? Because you just have an open road, not even any really cars around you. And then, yeah, like something like this happens and it just goes. Yeah, yeah. It would creep you out. And I I have that happen plenty of times where it's just like, I don't remember the last 15 minutes or like, you know, you have like some sort of landmarks or something to kind of guide you. Yeah. But um, like, I sometimes driving was like, I. Okay, yeah, I guess I must have passed that uh, that way station. Fuck. I guess. Shoot. I guess it was closed. Was it closed? Are they coming after me now? You know, like it's right. I get you get kind of entranced by the road sometimes, and yeah, this will knock you off your course. And that's I was gonna say. That's the beauty of it. We, we've all been there, and now David Mann cannot. He is in full mode of like paying attention and yeah. figuring things yeah. out. We've all been there. You've all of a sudden a, a terrible storm hits. Or it's snowing and you just got to be like hyper focused. You go on into your yeah. white knuckle mode. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. him now. He's entered that state of like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. This guy. Why did this guy target me? I don't understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Gosh. It's cool stuff. Well, listen. David Mann needed to <laughs> belly up to the bar when he got to this restaurant. He needed to get some Cedar Ridge whiskey yeah. in his life. You yes. got it right. What he needed. You guys heard yes. us talk all about our favorite whiskey of all time. The best whiskey in the entire world, Cedar Ridge Whiskey. They are distilled. Uh, they are distilled. They're really great people who distill yes. whiskey right here in our also backyard true. in Swisher, Iowa. It's incredible to us to seriously have this award-winning distillery in our backyard. To prove to you how incredible they are, GoBourbon.com wrote an article and pointed this insane fact out. Okay, ready? Cedar Ridge is the only craft distillery in America to be a state's number one overall best-selling whiskey. Woo! And I quote, in 49 states, a major distillery produces the number one best-selling bourbon in the state. We're talking the Jim Beams, the Jack Daniels, the Maker's Marks, whatever. In many cases, this is Jim Beam, like I said, Maker's Mark, Jack Daniels, but that is not the case in Iowa, where Cedar Ridge has been the number one selling whiskey bourbon for three straight years, outselling the nearest major distillery competitor by some 35%. Woo. Woo. Got that some means, catching up to do. That means what it's it's one of those things where like we know in Iowa and it's slowly making its way elsewhere. And now you guys know you're gonna be the one that's like, oh yeah, I, I've heard about Cedar Ridge. I yeah. know them. They're yeah. the best. Congratulations. Have you tried their quintessential single malt? Because I because I have. Like uh-huh. I, I've had a bottle for years. Oh, you know, sounds I've, great. Yeah. Have you tried their flagship bourbon? I kind of like to mix that with craft cocktails. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very I mean, it's drinkable on its own, but it's very good as a mix. Oh, that sounds good. Mm. Or you know, uh, have you heard of this man called Slipknot? Fuck yeah, dude. Dude, they have a collaboration with him. You got how do you not know this? I didn't well, you haven't told me yet. Well, yeah, I just heard about Cedar Ridge. Well, I've heard about him forever from the Confused Breakfast. So <sighs> that's wow. nice. You heard about it here. Cedar Ridge whiskey's the best in the world. First Iowa, next year state. Gotta check them out. Stop by or liquor store next to you uh pick some up ask them to order some if the store doesn't have it you can buy a bottle order it directly online at cedarridgedistillery.com <laughs> cedarridgedistillery.com stop by the website add them on social medias check them out in person at swisher iowa tell them the confused breakfast sent you grab a bottle trust us it's the best do what david mann should have done right 
now. CedarRidgeDistillery.com. <laughs> Scene three. After entering the diner <laughs> two years, Cedar Ridge Whiskey Duck. I know, it's very <laughs> years. hard. That's why you had to put your hands together and go, yeah. distillery. Cedar Ridge Distillery. You have to pretend com. like you got your first multi level marketing company and you're like, no, everyone, I must tell you about this. It's funny when you. Okay, we're going to move pretend, on. Pretend you're Elon Musk for like three seconds, Cedar Ridge Distillery.com. Every, everybody in your car, do this. Pull over safely and put your fingers together. Make a little like triangle yep. thing. Do the spider humping the mirror, and yes. then just say CedarRidgeDistillery.com. 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 Cedar We're now part of the Illuminati. Scene three. After entering the diner, man is shocked to see the truck parked outside, which makes him paranoid, wondering if the trucker is inside. <coughs> he confronts a trucker and gets in a scuffle. It isn't the trucker, but man hears the truck start up and he chases it down the road before it pulls away. Getting back on his way, man encounters a stalled school bus and tries to help them out. The truck appears again, freaking man out who abandons the school bus. Guys, I gotta ask you a question. We consulted the Jarrett Layoff actor database here in this movie. Okay. Yes. Um, do you know there's most of these people have never been in the movie before? There's one person in this movie that has been in two movies we've reviewed. Do you know who it is? Uh, is it the diner man? The not the diner man. Uh oh, diner woman. I the, think I had, I figured the, this the, out. The, uh, the, are you ready to figure it out? You can go. No, go ahead. <laughs> are you going to pull out your phone and Google it so you can f- sound smart to our friends on the podcast? Whatever, dude. It is the waitress. <laughs> the waitress. Okay. <laughs> Shirley. Daniel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. I was just gonna no, say. No, I was just gonna go. say. No, I was okay, just ready? gonna say. No, okay, just gonna okay. Say. okay, her name is Shirley O'Hara. Shirley She's, O'Hara. So yeah, tell yeah. me what the other movie she was. Shirley and O'Hara. Tell me what the other movie she was uh, in, that we've done. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Spiel, Spielberg. Just. You're not gonna know. Damn uh, it. it was summer of '70s, guys. It was Rocky. She was Mr. Jurgen's secretary in Rocky when Rocky shows up to be like, "Oh, yeah. oh wow, oh, oh, was Rocky. yeah, I She's heard I got the thing." Secretary. Yeah, whatever. Thanks, Jarrett. <laughs> you didn't recognize her from Rocky, AJ. I've watched that movie a million times. I did <laughs> not barely see her. Right? She she takes his name down and goes, "He'll be with you in a second. Yeah. And it's just like a side profile of her. But yeah, uh, can I have that card back? <laughs> <laughs> I Sh- love this. Shirley O'Hara. I love this scene. Jared Layoff, thank you so much for doing that because, like yeah. I said, I've watched that movie a million times. I did not recognize it. <laughs> that is why you're so wonderful. It's one of the funnest things to do. It really is. <laughs> um, I, I love when oh, you... weird an, an actress can be in multiple <laughs> movies. <laughs> no, oh, it's no, like no, you no, need no. a paycheck or something. <laughs> no. yeah. Everyone knows that woman worked with Spielberg several times. Yeah. Everyone knows that woman was only active. In the seventies, and that is it. So, duh, she's in other movies. Everyone knows that 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 John G. Avelson saw her in Duel, and that that him and Spielberg were great friends, and then he recommended Shirley to him. Duh! <laughs> Literally, everybody knows that. Duh! And also, coincidentally, they have the same birthday. Everybody knows duh. that. Duh! I love this scene. Um, I have four followers on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very and smart. I don't have a profile picture. <laughs> I'm very smart, but I only have four profile <laughs> followers. My profile name is JX27L. 69420. 69420. God, we're awesome. We're fun. That's why you guys are here. This is a good time. <laughs> it's like, Sean, I keep, I'm keeping it right here. And I have four followers on TikTok. <laughs> Go ahead, I need Sean. a shirt that says, duh, everyone knows that. And it just says, by so- <laughs> guy quote, with four quote, followers. Guy with four followers on TikTok. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> he hits this fence and like, cra- like, almost like disposes of his car. Like, like, it looks like it almost totals it, yeah. you know. And then like he's kind of dazed, and these two gentlemen get out and like, you, you all right, son? You doing all right? And I was just, just a little whiplash. Uh, he says, just a little whiplash, you know. But then he gets out of the car and walks towards the gas station and leaves his car mm-hmm. with the broken fence. And I, this guy. Watching him walk into the thing, and he's just like, "You gonna fucking pay for that?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But why? But why doesn't he? Then he comes back though, and the guy's still there. Why does he not say anything? <laughs> he's like just a small town guy who's stood just there. waiting. He's yeah. probably gonna. He's probably driving away to get his checkbook. He, he'll yeah, be back. He's like, eh, he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll come back. It's just honest folks that come through. Way these too parts. much faith in humanity. He's just like, <laughs> he's like, oh, third time this week. I'll, I'll just. I'm just gonna watch this one. It's like, see man. if it does it. <laughs> Like, dang, maybe I should move the fence. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you got fucking Steve keeps chasing people around the state. Like, uh, this always happens in front of the diner. Well, and 
yeah, it's like <laughs> he did. He just he goes crashes into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh. <laughs> oh, Ooh. good. A prehistoric forest. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Ooh. Prehistoric, Ooh. prehistoric forest. <laughs> it's just like... He doesn't seem very excited, though. Like, no. I'd be so excited to finally see like a place I could go and a maybe place call of the civilization. cops. Yeah. And, like, get yeah. some food and shit. He doesn't even think to call the cops here. It's you know what? You know what the most truthful part of this movie is? It, uh, especially for t- anyone watching it today is watching things happen and knowing and understanding exactly what the truth is, but then having anxiety that no one will believe you. Yeah. That's the most honest to God thing and fear of this entire damn movie. Yeah. Well, I should go in and call the cops. What if they don't believe me? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's happening to you. Just do it. Like It's fine. It's okay. It's better than not saying anything yeah. to anybody. Like maybe they'll think you're crazy, but at least it's out. You know, they like, already like to... think you're crazy. Have you yeah. seen them in the diner? They yeah, already like, think you're crazy. It's like journaling. Yeah. You, you write down a thought and it's out. You know, you've exercised it. Just tell the cops that a crazy killer truck guy's coming oh, after you. God, dude. Like it then and, and then you go in. And uh, obviously, the man's disturbed. He ordered Swiss on rye. Good God. And spelled rye. Yeah, and he spelled it out. And he's R Y E. R Y E. What's your last name? M A N N. Two N's. Stop spelling things. Nothing about you makes sense. Nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah you're one of them white collar guys with the smart learning oh. job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, well, why don't you tell me more about how you signed your checks? This, and this waitress is so sweet. She's like, oh, you bumped your head. Oh, oh, yeah. oh your head hurts. I'll get you some aspirin. I'll get you some aspirin. I'll so get you sweet. Some yeah. Well, it's a cool, it's a cool scene too. I, I mean, this, I think this was another added, added scene um, in the film. Was it? Let me see. Um, I think you might be right. <laughs> Some of it maybe. I think. Oh, sorry. It, the new scenes they added were the railroad crossing, the school bus, and the, um, the David phoning his wife. Right. Okay, gotcha. Those were the and the driving through the city apparently at the uh, beginning. This is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. I just like that it is, it is pretty much a wonder of him coming Dude. in to the bathroom and like kind of handheld, cool shot. handheld, and then like he's. Talking to himself, and like I thought at first that he he was like talking, like literally audibly talking to himself. Dude, I did too. And I'm like, oh man, this track is off so much. But it's thankfully it's his inner dialogue. Um, I do like that about the character. I like hearing that. Um, and apparently, what when that would happen, uh, Spielberg like already recorded all those lines of uh, so they played it of Dennis Weaver saying that, and he would just like have it on top of the camera, cool, so Dennis Weaver could react to his own thoughts. Um, wow, which just seems like such such an easy. Move. They had the Bluetooth speaker that they yeah. were carrying around. <coughs> wow, yeah. But yeah. then he follows JBL. him out. Yeah, follows him out of the bathroom, <laughs> and you see the truck parked there. It's like that is such Spielberg, and like at before this Hitchcock. Yeah. Of of just such a reveal. We're good. Now. And then no, we'll, we're not. Like you get you yeah. had that breath, and then now you realize that it could be anybody in this place. You, I'm like, fuck yeah, that's so cool. And dude, these guys, this fu- especially the first one they show. Yeah. You're like, that's him. Uh-huh. This guy's terrifying. You're going to have to fuck with that guy? Yeah. Oh, shit. And then they show the last guy at the end of the bar who's drinking beer at 1030 in the morning. Ooh. All right. Here's a prop. <laughs> Dude, tell me there's something about uh, a cold, light beer oh, in, like, daddy. one of those mugs. Mm-hmm. It's that, it's that, uh, it's that, like, short Pilsner glass yes. that he's got. Yes. yes. Oh, I don't know what it is, man. There used to be a few bars in our area that no longer do that, but like I don't know why. And it's just like they have the the unlimited amount of Pabst Blue Ribbon, yes, right. or like Bud, and you know Miller High Life. Life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it is. It's very hot in the restaurant, but they're cooler. Like they they don't cool the restaurant because the cooler needs all the all right. the yeah. cooling. Yes. Yeah. So that's how you got cold back in the seventies. Actually, a lot of people don't know that, but that's you drank right. the cold beer. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows that. Everybody knows that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's Four your props. It was, you want the... I, I just want a cold beer from that restaurant. Oh, okay. That or I want a Chuck's Cafe uh, menu. Okay. I think that's a really underrated like prop that you could have on the wall. Like, what's Chuck's Cafe? That's well, cool. It's a movie from 1971 called Duel. Yeah. You've probably never seen You've it. You've probably never seen it. But I have because I'm smart. Four yep. followers on TikTok. <laughs> So. Chuck's Cafe is still there, at least as of 2021. Is it? Like that? Yeah, so apparently there's a real establishment and still there. Cool. So just saying. Let's go. We go get you your menu. I'm taking David's glasses. Damn it, dude! You had I so had much, so much you time. Like, oh, I thought let me about tell it. And you another like, pro- and cool I, thing about the oh, movie. Oh, hey, let me give you some more information so Sean can steal my prop. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> Those are tight glasses. They are. I know, right? Let's talk about how cool they are. You they are son of a very bit. cool. 
like a cool beer down your throat. You Imagine if you're menu. wearing those. I, I will take boots. I, I, no, <laughs> I'm not a cowboy boots guy. You know. Yeah. No, I think I want his briefcase. Ooh, cool. Post accident. Yes. Mm. Who knows what it looks like? Damn right. Samsonite. Samsonite. <laughs> so uh, you know it. Hold, you know it held up. Oh yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. It's oh, a good yeah. quality oh, yeah. made item. So uh, yeah, I think I'll take the okay. suitcase. Cool. cool. I just I I like this scene is so great to me, and you can s- definitely see the burgeoning Spielberg that we know. I agree. Especially with this build up and the tension building, yeah. and all the shots he chooses to use, like uh, uh like a guy in the foreground and David in the background, just kind of like peering over, you know, suspicious. Like I love it all, but yeah. But truly everyone's probably looking at them because they're all local and he's the only non-local dude in there. He's fucking, he's doing the, he's like doing this. Like, (laughs) like like, like he's covering his face. (laughs) But like, like no one will know. No one will know that I'm looking through my hands. (laughs) They're all like, who the fuck is this guy? (laughs) So he's never been scared in his life. I know. Since he was a kid, he's just like, <laughs> like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, uh, I saw just, my kid do this at home. He's just like putting his tie up over his <laughs> eyes. He's like, oh, I can hide here. <laughs> it's like no one can see me. Do you have La- Tylenol and a, a blanket that I can <laughs> crawl under, <laughs> Miss? Excuse me. Do you have Do you have any flat Sprite I could have? <laughs> Watered some, down Sprite. Salty some crackers. salty crackers. And warm it up. Maybe please. some some Campbell's chicken noodle soup. That'd be great, dude. But Sean, to 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 go off of that though, like the the fake out shot of the guy going to the truck mm-hmm. and then pulling out in a different truck. I mean, it's just, it's pure genius. Genius. Yeah. genius. It had me going because then you're like. I don't know. Is he in this place? Is he not? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And the fight, the fight with this dude in the sandwich is fucking awesome. I know. I love that guy so much, dude. Yeah. He's like, you just fucking knock my sandwich out of my. Yeah, he's like, wanting to enjoy his sandwich. That's all he wanted to do. Said, Can you imagine being <laughs> just sitting at the Iowa 80 truck stop, like eating a Wendy's Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, and a guy comes over and knocks it out of your hand? You're, not your, anymore. Your your dollar. You just knocked my sandwich out of my hand. <laughs> your value menu, like say, like meal you just yes. ordered because you didn't really want to stop for very long. <laughs> So you're just like I'm just trying to get something, but I just don't want to be in the car. Just at least 15 minutes. Oh, they got the they got the five for five meal. Oh, nice. Hell yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's just like, hey, just knock it off. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you I don't like it. I want you to knock it off. What? <laughs> what? We're not, I'm just. You want me to knock off eating this sa- sandwich? Did I? Was this yours? I was it your five for five? Pretty sure I ordered. I, <laughs> I ordered a five for five. Did you order a five for five too? Oh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Does it have Swiss on it? That's all right. <laughs> well, it's like yeah, this guy just wanted to stop for a sandwich and then head off to his next stop and meet up with Lincoln Hawk Lincoln and, and Bull Hurley and <laughs> yeah. go to the arm wrestling. Match. That's right. That's right. He That's was, all he he was to looking do. forward. He said, "Oh yeah, it turns out Lincoln Hawk's son. You know, I'm going to get to meet his son. We go way back, yeah. you know. Once oh, he gets to that bar, they've already been drinking yeah. for, t- since 9 a.m. You know. That guy. That guy was like, he he was pretty dang patient too, <laughs> but but you know, then David Mann assaults him. Yep. And says, "Well, <laughs> now you're going to get your ass kicked." Yep. And he rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, he he earned that. He he ter- he totally earned that. Do you guys think he was in the restaurant? The truck driver was in the restaurant. So here's what I like to think. Okay. Okay. So we find out that like I mean technically there's nothing that points to him being there. Correct. Right. So I like to think that it's mostly it's mostly just like the truck driver he pulled up, but then he just went. <laughs> <laughs> And he sees he he's sees like, David in the restaurant like, going like this. Like, yeah. Oh, I fucking got him! Oh, and he's just like so scared. He's just like he's not gonna see me. And that first guy came <laughs> out. <laughs> the first guy came out to go yeah, to truck. Like, Bill, Bill, hey, is that guy <laughs> fucked up in there? Oh my god, he's so weird. Oh yeah, cool. He's <laughs> it's it's definitely that because he's like he's like oh shit here he comes here he comes here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> oh Bill, oh come on. Bill. Uh, hey hey, is that guy still in there? The guy with the tie. Yeah, the stupid sunglasses. He is. Oh my God! Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't tell him I'm in here. Okay. All right. I'm not gonna tell. I'm not gonna tell him you're in here. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on my way to the truck. Uh, I gotta go. Gotta All right, go. man. Well, you have a good time. You have a good day. All right. All right. We'll see you later. Don't take it too far. Actually, what are you hauling today? <laughs> Gas. Gas. 
Uh, nothing important. It's just it's nuclear. Uh, oh. <laughs> same old, same old. Same old. Tuesdays, huh? Do you think mm. he was in there? You know, some some trucks have those uh, extended cabs, and uh, they have like beds back there. Okay. okay. I think the trucker just wanted to take a nap. I'm humanizing this trucker all no. day long. I don't know if you can, man. I think upon rewatch, there was a strange thing that I noticed. I don't know. When man, when man crashes his car and leaves and walks into the cafe, he 100% <laughs> shuts his door. When he comes back out, the door to his car is open. Mm. The driver's side of his car door is wide open. And so? So that means truck driver... Came over, fucked with his car, fucked with his radiator, radiator hose, hose, fucked with his radio hose, fucked with all of it, and then handed the dude the money. Said, "I'll pay for the fence." <laughs> he, oh. pay, he paid for the fence, but let this guy go. Don't he, ask him any questions. He is a for his little community. He's a do gooder citizen. Yep, you know. So that truck driver never went inside, but he went over and fucked with his car. Okay, how about that? Okay, yeah, yep. See, just throwing it out there. I so mean, we get to these stupid kids. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> if we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. Uh, it's the bus. It's the bus driver. No, it's the kids. Bus driver. <laughs> I want to punch, punch all the kids in the face. <laughs> it's a, this guy. No, it's the kids. <laughs> With a smile on his face. Especially the one kid is like. <laughs> you can't window. do it. You can't do it. You know, I guess there's only so much do you, you not can understand do physics as an authority figure for kids. Yes, but. There's also something you can do to tamper this. I mean, also he's like, yeah, let him play in the road. Yeah, no. Nah, nah, <laughs> like, meanwhile, Johnny and Susie are like playing or like drawing a four square square out to play four square in the in the middle, <laughs> in the of, the middle of the road, like, in the middle dude, of the highway. Get control of these idiots. Yep, that's all I'm saying. So, so you're not you're only punching you're not punching the kids because you feel like it's the bus driver's fault that the kids suck so much. Yes. Okay. Cool. I can buy that. Well, if that's the route we're taking, then I'm then I'm punching all those kids' as parents. Oh, cool. Right. That's all how right. it has to go. What I about man though? Do you think man's a punchable face in this movie? Like he's he's not paying for fences. He's breaking fences. He's knocking sandwiches out of dudes' hands. That, like that is a federal offense in my book. Oh yeah, sandwich sandwich thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the fence is uh, well. Know. Shouldn't have put that fence there, but yeah. What was uh, it holding in anyway? Right. <laughs> right. Grass. Yeah. See. Yeah. Ah, it's my property. <laughs> it's my property. It's my property. <laughs> what do you raise there? Nothing. Nothing. Wh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> Why are we talking to each other? I don't know. <laughs> I don't we'll know. See you later. <laughs> I, I am certain that this car could not push this bus if, no! it, if it wanted to in its life. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> so he's just he's so sure of it though. But he's I like, don't yeah, feel like oh, he yeah. is, right? The, the bus driver. Is. The bus yeah, driver. Yeah, bus yeah. Is. yeah, man's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> the bus driver is so sure of it. It's like why am I trusting you? You're a bus driver. Like, <laughs> oh no! You're worse than a truck driver. Like I, I've, I've met some really nice bus drivers in my life, but you can't tell me like like back then, like you're like a bus driver was all you did. It wasn't like like you like bus drivers. Like all the bus drivers I know also are like they're also like farmers or community <laughs> members and all these other things and like and and like you can't tell me that you and your hat. This is back when they gave you hats for being a bus Come driver. Come on, yeah. Okay? Let's bring that back. You're not, no, you're not a mechanic. <laughs> you're not You're not a car guy. You're a bus driver. Did you hear the story that just came out? Apparently, like in Kentucky or Tennessee, they had to suspend school for a week because the bus drivers were so bad that the kids, like some kids got home at 10 o'clock at night because oh. they were so bad at driving their routes <laughs> that they basically had to be like, school's canceled for a week so that the bus drivers could practice their routes. <laughs> what fucking world do we live in? This is Wait amazing. A Wait a second. This Wait is amazing. A second. Wait a second. We've come a long way from how, this bus driver. How, to now. Sure. How I mean, far? they should probably bring back, bring back hats and then they, they might how, be able to. How long ago is this, Mike? This is like the last week. So they don't have they okay. So they don't allow them to use just you know Google Correct. Maps. You can't use your phone while you're driving a bus. My God, like, Ten, school got out at three o'clock. Took seven kids were on the bus for seven hours. Well, I guarantee that's definitely what's happening with these kids. It has to like, be. Where are they even at? Uh, yeah, what who school knows? did they come from? What? Yeah, like it's are they the, on a field trip? It, this has to be a field trip. They were going to the. Uh, Where's the teachers? The, well. They were going to the uh, butcher, the the meat factory or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, see how it's really done. Yeah, see how it's really done. Turn some kids into vegetarians. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but I think that's what they were doing. <laughs> We're I on do. our way back from the old meat factory. Oh, yeah. I do like I, I imagine the, the bus driver from Ms. Doubtfire. You play meat? Yeah. Like, got some place warm to go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> David. Same I, guy. I do like to picture the conversation though between the trucker and the bus driver when he does pull up. Like man <laughs> man drives away and he's like fire, like, get out of here. Trucker pulls up, he's like, Having trouble with your bus? Yeah, man. If you could just like kind of just get behind me and like get in the first gear. Yeah, hey, all... dude, you guys all get in. I'm gonna push you. Okay. And cool. then he pushes them out. He pulls up, and they're like, "That guy in the red car said you were crazy." He's like, "He's the crazy one, you guys. <laughs> He's been chasing me all week." Well, anyway, <laughs> I gotta get back to work. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> like, truck driver. <laughs> Yay, truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> David, David hears them cheering. He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That in my head so much. <laughs> That's the thing is like, like to everybody else, like you said, he went back probably fixed that. Dude, one hundred percent. Like he's covering his tracks so that when they come after him, that's he'll be right. like, they'll be like that guy. They're like that guy's uh, awesome. Oh no, that's that's like the sweetest man I've ever met in my life. Oh, don't worry, I got my tools, Jeb. Like yeah, the it's the up. the church they passed by, he donated all of his paycheck to. Yeah, as well, and then he pushed. It. Oh, so not only did he fix the fence. He also donated his paycheck to the church, and then he helped push a, a school bus full of children to their destination. And he's trying to kill you? And he's trying to kill you? For no reason. Hmm. You know you know when you're like driving and you're behind somebody, and you're like, are they going to my house? Because <laughs> they're in front of you for, for, for so yeah. long, like they're going to the same general area. You're like, get the fuck yeah. out of my way. This is kind of the thing. Like Maybe the truck driver... Kind of like his station is kind of near David's house or wherever David's going. You Could know? be, man. And so his, uh, the truck driver stop was the gas station that they first stopped at. Mm-hmm. Got all his load out, you know, took, yep. got all the gas in the ground. Dumped and now he's load. just headed back. He's yeah. just doing his job. Just I mean, doing his fucking job, dude. I like to think of, uh, this, is, this is what I like to think of, is that um, the truck driver is a, a good citizen, right? But, and like, you know, David Mann with all of his privilege, is just having the worst day <laughs> he's ever had. I don't want to make anyone have the worst day ever at their job. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what it's basically like. it is. And like, so David Mann... <laughs> Tim Robinson. Man, is, yeah. <clears throat> it's like, I like to think that it's like, like the truck driver is actually having a bad day, right? Yes. And like, let's say that like what, what David Mann did is like he did and in, in fact kind of cut him off a little quick. Like to us, it looked like a normal thing as it sometimes does. But, you know, you don't want to, like, move over right in front of a semi like that. Maybe it did jostle him a little bit. We're seeing it from David's perspective, right? too. We're only seeing one perspective yes. here. <laughs> so then... Humanizing we're trying sure to enough, help Sure enough. You know, oh, dang it, I had a spat with my wife last night. This is the worst day ever. <laughs> and he's like, uh, he goes up, he gets gas. He takes the last gas at the gas station. Oh. And then he goes in and he goes... Goes to the guy who's like, hey, you got change for a dollar. He takes the last change from the guy. Damn it. When all this guy wanted was a salted nut roll from the vending machine. Or maybe he needed to call his wife. So he took the last gas. He took the last change. Mm-hmm. And then he's taking up all the time. He's putting him behind on his route. Mm-hmm. Okay. Of course he's mad. This is the straw that broke the camel's back for this truck <laughs> so now, driver. Yeah, yeah. Now he's full in. He's yeah. like, I'm going to fuck with this He's guy. like, this guy sucks. He didn't even help that school bus. Yeah. Ah! And then he's like, and he broke the fence outside my favorite stop. What a jerk. And he went in and he paid for a whole round of beers for everybody. Yep. David Mann's sitting there thinking like, oh, maybe if I just bought him a beer. And he's like, this guy actually goes in and buys them all beer. You he know what I mean? He actually did it. He's actually being a nice guy. I think, I think David Mann is stealing this man's day. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes. Well, yeah. but from here on out, let's go to scene four. Yeah, this is when you can't really just uh, trying to kill him. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Okay, you're right. Guys. So man, man <laughs> continues on his way, stopped at a railroad crossing. The truck sneaks behind, begins to try to push him into the train. He holds the truck at bay until the train passes and veers off the road, with the truck continuing on without him. A short distance ahead, man pulls into another gas station to call the police. Before he can contact them, the truck appears and begins driving through the gas station, destroying everything and trying to kill man. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. He gets in his car and is able to find a place down the road to hide. The truck drives by and man drifts off to sleep to all 
some distance between him and the truck. Yeah. I wrote that pretty good. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Dude, all right. this train bush is terrifying. Yeah, this is cool. I, I don't I don't like this. At I all. like that he added this because it, I think this like some some of this movie can get a little derivative for yes. me. Uh, I will be honest, it is a, it is just a lot of driving and I'm so glad that you know, this movie did well on TV, so they wanted him to shoot some more so he could do a, a little bit of a theatrical run. And so this is one of the scenes, like you said, and I think it, it works. Like, this is a brilliant idea to just, you know, I didn't kill him. He went on the train track, you know, something like that. Yeah. But then I also like that he that he goes by or whatever in the, in the truck goes by he toots his horn well the train goes the train rrr, rrr, and he, he goes, toots rrr, back i'm like what a fucking dick uh-oh <laughs> steve's at it again <laughs> yes yeah the train guy's looking at his mirror going oh damn it <laughs> fuck he's trying to push him into me that's gonna really oh, fuck my man. day everybody's against david even the train driver <laughs> yeah the, if i could turn this thing and veer into you i would i would <laughs> <laughs> that guy just no, looks like a dick in your red I, car. <laughs> I was I was scared of this before I even saw the movie. Like I never pull all the way up to the train no, crossing. No, for no. a lot of reasons. Like I don't want to accidentally like have my brakes go out and I'm going to run in the train. I don't want to have someone push me into it. I don't want to have a train derail and kill me. Dude, you ever seen Lethal Weapon Four? Yeah, bruh, bruh, bruh. Oh. Happens. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it happens. And uh, Mel Terrifying. Gibson. Uh, now I know. Luckily. This is, a, this is another thing. I always thought train crossings were going to be a bigger problem in my life all the time because I always thought I was going to get, like, somebody was always going to try to push me into one. Always. And thank for, thank God for Mel Gibson, years later after this movie was made, showing me the right maneuver how to get out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, saved I me. Did he though, saved you twice. You were scared yeah. of pools before. <laughs> Mel Gibson, you know? Yeah. So he goes uh, after this, what? He sneaks out. <laughs> is, he, is he up in heaven, man? Is he upstairs? No, I just, you know, he's a, you know, St. Mel. Good stuff, man. All right. <laughs> Sean, I did I did want to, I did want to bring this up to you though, Sean. <laughs> Apparently what Steven Spielberg fought pretty damn hard about rear projection in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine how bad this movie would have been with rear project like James Bond style? Yeah. It would have been a nightmare. It would have been so bad. Well, and it's cool. I mean, like, if you have the guy who who invented, like, the car to shoot the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen in, you know? And, like, all of these shots look fucking incredible. Yeah. You know? Uh, that would... The, the rear projection would just taint this movie. And, it, it, like, we wouldn't be talking about this movie. No. For, 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 for sure. Okay, maybe I don't understand. What are you talking about, rear, like, pro- like rear projection? Like, projection is, like... A, yeah. It's, like, if those movies you see when people are just, like... Wah, 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 and then, like, the, oh, and there's just a the background is kind of bouncing oh, as well. okay, okay, yeah. So they so shoot it in a studio. It's, and, like, basically green screen, but not green terrible. screen. It looks stupid. And yeah. they're just, like, on... No, he wanted to, he wanted to shoot this movie for real and in camera and like I think the production manager was like this with this uh, scale of a movie you're never gonna be able to do this. He's like, well, it, Steven Spielberg was actually like uh, that actually kind of put a fire under me and uh, I wanted to prove wow. him wrong, so I just Bet. did it. Um, and it makes like even these driving scenes amazing looking because a lot of the times like even even uh, before this movie was uh, cut down for TV and yeah, then uh, yeah. enlarged again for theatrical, uh, those enlarged images, you could see Spielberg in the <laughs> back directing uh, Dennis Weaver. So they had to kind of crop him out. But those shots are incredible. And he's just like, I, you know, when you, when you use... Um, and for one thing, these, these cars, while filming, aren't going very fast. But he's like, if you put these cars up against like a canyon and you put those in the foreground... The, the earth looks like it, these cars are moving really, really fast. Right. And he's like, you use the right lenses, you use kind of longer lenses, and these cars are traveling what seems to be faster than they really are in, in person. It's He's just yeah. like, he fucking nailed it. You he, know, He knew what he was doing right T- off the bat. Take a look at something like this and then go back and watch like Easy Rider where you can tell like there are shots that they are going so slow yeah. just so they can get the shots right. Yeah, mm-hmm. Because it, it, the camera couldn't keep up uh, at, at points where... They're just the bikes were going too fast in Easy Rider. They told them to go slow, and you could literally see them like trying to keep their bikes up half the time. Yeah. But in this, there's the same idea, but some of them literally were going 30 miles an hour, and they were using those techniques you're talking about to do it. It's great. Well, even giving giving it up for uh, the stuntman uh, that who drove Carrie Lofton. Carrie Lofton was the uh, truck, the, the truck driver. I think it was was it Dale Van Sickle was the truck driver. I thought it was I Carrie think it was Lofton. Carrie Lofton. Carrie Lofton. Okay, so Dale Va- Dale Van Sickle was the driver uh, for the regular car, um, and yeah, get, I mean, 
trying to be directed while driving, I guess. Like yeah. getting getting the getting that truck like nut to butt with a camera pretty much. Like that's pretty outstanding. Um, but then also Dennis Weaver did a lot of his own driving, and that's yep. important to see, especially if yep. you're doing this in camera. You want to see Tom Cruise jump that fucking building, you know? You yeah. want to see that in camera, and that really happened. Like even one of one of the shots in the movie where he goes like over an embankment, kind of like that was him. He's like he he wanted to do his own driving, and Steven Spielberg let him. Fuck, yeah. it's it pays off because that we are not talking about this movie if they green screened it or if none of these uh, none if it didn't look as beautiful it does on this road because I was blown away. This is 1971. This is more than 50 years ago, and this this film looks gorgeous. It's shot so well. It's it's paced incredibly well, I think, actually, for, for the time and for what they're doing and, and how it's made. Um, it's really surprising how such a simple concept can keep your attention this yeah. long. I think, that's, I think that's a tribute to itself. Like, when they finally had to step it up a notch, because I was getting to this point where I'm like, he lost him. He's back. He lost him. He's back. Yeah. He lost him. Like, it, it, for a while there, it starts to get a little bit too much like that. Then you finally get to the scene where you're like, oh, fuck, he's trying to kill him on the train, and now he's like letting other people know how psycho he yeah. is. Used to be like he's hiding it from everybody. Now he's smashing through the phone booth, like legitimately almost killed this man. Mm-hmm. And the snakes and tarantulas and like, this is terrifying. You got a runaway truck trying to catch you, but you're also like dodging snakes like <laughs> and glass and oh, some lady yeah. yelling like, this is this is just intense. Take a look at my snakes. You have time. <laughs> I, I, we have punchable face. I want favorite lady or favorite character. Oh, you want favorite? She's favorite, my favorite. We'll call it favorite like uh, non main character. Yeah, favorite like side character. Okay. Actor. Yeah, Someone's, she's my favorite. We're bringing it. It's like absolutely yeah. or whatever she says like in there. Uh, it's like like well, you put as much ethyl as you can inside of that. It's like oh, of course. Oh. <laughs> it's like oh, oh. Oh. check your radiator yeah. hose. Oh. Which by the way, if she would have checked the radiator hose. Hmm. We would have been good here, guys. Would have been just yeah, fine. Yep. Just saying, I, sweet old lady. Can you imagine? Like, I, I, I try to think about this. I try to put it in, into, uh, into context of the time, and it's like, you know, this happened to cars. Everything was mechanical. It wasn't like, it wasn't as electronic as everything is now. Like, I'd have no problem like cruising in my like Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> Just being like, yeah, I mean, it's whatever. I'm safe in this vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> like, <We're> fine. <laughs> everything's fine, and I, I could drive this for like until I run out of gas, and literally not be concerned about one damn thing. <laughs> you know, they put like temperature gauges in cars. Yeah. Like, you used to have to pay attention. To that you thing. actually Uh-oh. had to pay attention. Uh-oh. And okay, wonder, slow down. Yeah, I've to... never <laughs> once looked at my temperature gauge. Why is that there? My oil gauge. <laughs> Oil gauge, like yeah, that's oh, like weird. the same at, at you know the entire time I've owned that. Car. It'll tell me if there's an oil. Pump. I'm sure I'll get a, a have notification. You, have you never owned a Dodge Intrepid or a <laughs> Sebring, C- Sebring Forsica or whatever, <laughs> Hyundai Sonata? <laughs> you never had a first car, Mike? Jesus Christ! Duh. <laughs> you ever had a 1998 Honda Civic, Mike? No, <laughs> I, like, and a 1988 <laughs> Ford Thunderbird. Thank there you, you very go. Much. Oh man, oh, digital oh, speedometer. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did you did you tilt your mirror to look up cheerleader skirts too? Yeah. Jesus, oh my yeah. god! I actually sat so far back in my seat, you know, as as you would do that. My head was like out the back window. Oh yeah, you know I, what hate, I, mean? I hate that. Fuck, yeah. so... Actually, I'm lying. I have super short legs. So yeah. There's no possible <laughs> way I could do it. Long torso, short legs, guys. Uh, so yeah, speaking of Dennis Weaver uh, as well, doing his own stunts, he did this phone booth stunt as well. He was in the Damn. phone booth, and uh, they just kind of set it up and. Spielberg wanted to get in one because he's like, I don't want to tempt fate and do this again. So he just, uh, I think uh, the truck driver, uh, sorry, what was his name? Uh, Carrie, Carrie Lofton. Lofton. Carrie Lofton. Arguably had, Hollywood's greatest stunt driver of all time. Yeah. Right. Just got to put that in there. Um, so he had like a uh, like a kill moment where he was just going to abort, you know, and it was like, if he if he didn't get out by this. Yeah. This if he didn't space. get out by like this like line that they had, mm. he would just veer left Damn. and he'd be fine. But even still, like something could have gone wrong with that door. It's like a, tr- a trifold door, so you have to like slide it open. Like yeah, those exactly. are those are tricky sometimes, you know. But yeah, damn, he fucking did it, and it looks great. If it, it's it was like the setup of markers along the way, mm-hmm. just like that. You're gonna get here, here, here. He's basically laying this out like Doc Brown, mm-hmm. being like, "Here's our point of no return." Yeah. And if this goes, if everything goes wrong, like then you're basically toast. You're going off that bridge. But yeah, like him. Him getting to that point, David has to be gone, and it looks so good. Yeah, this is, I think this is the most intense moment for me 
um, of the whole thing. Because this this is where it started to get to the point that I really didn't know if one person if if one of these people was going to die. Yeah, I didn't. I, I truly didn't know. And I, I, like this is where I really started to get. It, I think highly intrigued is because now he's becoming more reckless, like you're saying. And I, I think I became more engaged at this point. Yeah. So, and then he's circling it like three yeah, times. Yeah. And that's the other thing is like, like a shark. Ooh. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we like that. Huh? Mm, okay. We've done that. We've done that one. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's also the point where I'm just like, oh, he's trying to kill him. Yeah. Like, he's it's not fun and games. He's not going to stop until he kills him Ugh. which like for the the uh, uh last half of the or uh, beginning half of this movie i was like no, he's, maybe he's just kind of fucking with him and like yeah. he doesn't really want to kill him yeah no now he's now now it's like a real threat and he's actually wanting to murder david mm-hmm. you know well let's yeah. finish it so scene five man then heads off again but is dumbfounded to see that the truck is waiting for him a few miles ahead man gets out tries to confront him he then flags down another vehicle to ask for help after being attacked by the truck again man gets in his car and a high speed chase ensues his car starts to fail but he's able to make it to the top of a hill he decides to send his car at the truck after jumping out this causes the truck to crash off a cliff this this is the this movie's the reason why we have a right to bear arms. <laughs> like at this point, you should literally be able to get a gun and shoot the truck driver dead. Like yeah, this is this is I hate this so much. You just, like, what are you doing? You just gotta leave go me alone. Maximum overdrive on this guy. You have to, yeah. dude. Yeah, like this this dude is and and there's even some beautiful like. In the chaos of this, there's like beautiful shots in this. The 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 truck and the train like side by side, mm-hmm. yeah. with like the sunset in the background. Yeah. You're like, gee, he's Spielberg's just like he's like this is my shot. Yeah, you feel like it in this movie. Definitely he's killing it. Yeah, no, I, I like I like you saying that because yeah, it does feel like that. It feels like I'm I'm you know this. I think he goes into every movie, especially this movie, being like this could be the last movie I ever make. I, I don't better know. kill it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, with that sense of urgency as well, like having a 10-day shoot on a extremely low budget to do any of this, you know, he's got to kill it. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, what would you think about this, like, the old couple, like flagging down the old couple scene here? <laughs> <They're> fun. <laughs> Weren't they? I heard that they were in a different movie, too. I think it's Close Encounters or E.T. Dude, I think that's what it is. I think it was the same couple same came back couple. to be in a car in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Well, then the gas station snake lady was also in 1941, like doing That's the same awesome. kind of scene. With awesome. Jim Belushi like lands a plane. He's like, fill her up. And she's like, well, <laughs> how? You know, <laughs> Ethel? Yeah. All I could think of when, it was, when that, that old couple pulled up was Back to the Future. 100%. Hey, you got to help me out. It's like, keep driving, Evan. <laughs> ah, <laughs> no ah. I love it. I like her That's reaction. all I can think about. But like, and I, I totally expected that to happen in this. I'd be like, oh, that's a nice reference uh, for later on. Uh, okay. But, but you're Peter Griffin going, ah, I see what you did there. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 I see what you did there. <laughs> Like earlier on, when we, were, when we were talking about our moms like doing a mom arm. She yeah. does the GM. <laughs> she, like, she says Jim, but with like two GM. syllables. GM. 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 <laughs> when the car, when the truck's backing up towards them. I, I, I like how the 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 old man's just trying to do the the kind of nice guy thing of like, okay, oh uh, yeah, no, before, no, we can't. I'm sorry, we can't do that. No, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, we got to fight. <laughs> Just trying to do the laugh off thing. Yeah. And uh and this is again th- though you see that truck like he is like backing up and he doesn't care who gets in the way at this point. No. He's he He's wants moved everyone on to the next level. He, yeah, it's like this is even again further beyond where the phone booth was mm-hmm. because now there's other humans in his way like visibly in his way but he will stop at nothing apparently to get david man also personally i'm pissed at him too because he was running into this the snake cages and shit and yeah. whatever you think about snakes i actually like them they're like that lady was seemed sad i felt bad for I her know. you know i'm like that pissed me off so i'm like oh yeah yeah i want to fucking kill this guy now yeah <clears throat> yeah he and i'll tell you what you get to this end scene the tension's fully risen it's crazy i could not like this wasn't what I wanted from the ending, right? Okay, I don't. It fe- it feels like an easy cop out for this whole ending of the movie, right? He he he's driving straight. He pulls up to the back of the cliff, very uh like um, tremor style, right? Mm-hmm. But then he he it would be like in Tremors if they started running towards the worm, like he he drives away from the cliff. 
clear as day. He's like, I'm jumping out. I'm going to jump out of the car. Yeah. I'm going to hold on. I'm jumping. <laughs> and like, and the truck driver sees this happening, still hits the car, and then still appears to like gas. Like, yeah. like we're going. I just, it felt like the weirdest way to make this truck drive off the cliff. It, it's like, uh, yeah. It's like, uh, if Alan said, this one's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the truck driver is. Uh, but Fuck you. you. <laughs> I, I love the desperation of this. If there's one thing I do have a bit of a critique on, it's like, and and you know, obviously I know, who who the hell am I to critique Spielberg even at this point in his career oh, and everything, it. right? But it like the only thing I could have asked for was was like, you know, this uh, uphill battle, you know, how they're going up that grade, and the car is that's it's losing its. Uh, uh, from the heat and everything, mm -hmm. temps getting too hot, the radiator hose, blah, blah, blah. Like, I wish I could have seen more of that truck gaining on him, yeah. whether it be aerial to from the side, somehow, some way make it happen so you can see the gap is closing because otherwise, for me, it just felt like it was like, oh, there he is. Oh, and then there's the truck. Oh, but there he is again, still smoking, He's still doing the same thing. And there's the other truck. And then there it is. It just felt like that part was really drawn out to me. Right. Finally, so he could just get to the top of that hill so he could coast it down, right? And that part is what drug out for me. I mean, I didn't mind this because he does, he puts that, he jams his suitcase down in there. I think that's a really exciting thing. Like, he's pushed to his limit now. Mm -hmm. And I felt that. You know, I and no I, matter what happens here, he's kind of fucked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's pushed to his limit. He under it's like he understands now. Yeah. Like this is this is do or die at this point, and uh, it's all coming to a head. And uh, and that craziness that he was looking for from from uh, this character, I mean, it really comes out. Those shots, those shots are like a a frame in a comic book in my brain. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, those shots, close ups yeah. of him, you know, and it, and it. It's like the most color and most like contrast or something, or like maybe your brain does that, like to that you get out of this movie. And I thought it was a really, really intense ending uh, with all that. Yeah, I liked I liked the build up for sure, and I get what you're saying, Mike. And I honestly thought what I was gonna what was gonna happen and what I uh, had remembered happening was that he put you know he he gets to the top of the hill and starts going down. He starts speeding up a lot. And so the truck driver I was I was thinking was gonna get like right on his ass and he was like going And then to, he could actually make it over. Or like he was gonna take a real sharp turn and that truck can't and okay. he just goes right off I'm the cliff. I'm into that. I think I'm that would have been that. better, honestly. But that's but then do you call it a duel at that point? True. Yeah. Because I think that that's what this is all leading up to. That's why this has to be called a duel. Because at the end name. they have a duel. <laughs> call it truck from hell. Call, call it the call runaway. A guy, a guy won't leave me alone, truck. <laughs> you know what we should call this movie? Business Trip. Oh. Ooh, I like we that. Starring it, Ed Helms. Yeah. What if, we, what if we call this... I mean, what honestly, what if we call this movie flammable? Because it literally advertised to us subconsciously for the entire movie that this truck's going to blow up in yeah. some way. This truck's going to fucking blow up. Yeah. And it, it doesn't. Didn't. Are we... <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. What did Spielberg say? He like... He said he kind of wanted to see it like dying slowly. Yeah, he, he wanted he wanted to be like more like an animal. And I yeah. okay, and and like you know what, I'm I'm there for that. I get you. I, who am I to question Steven Spielberg? But like, fucking blow that truck up. I know. Blow it, that truck up. It, it's because this uh, this truck is the antagonist. Yeah, not a person behind the wheel at this point. Honestly, blow like the truck up. It's really not. And so it was like killing this beast, is what he said, and he. He had like six cameras on this. It was the same thing. We're only going to be able to do this one time. Awesome. Everybody get your freaking, make sure the cameras are on, make sure you're rolling, make sure you're in position. He said that like the long shot that they really ended up using, he's like, that guy deserves a medal. Yeah. Because awesome. of the shot he got. And he followed it all the way down, slow motion. And I do think it really does resemble like almost like this dragon type mm -hmm. creature of yeah. almost just like, <laughs> You know, it's fucking cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's I mean, really it's, cool. it's the 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 cab comes down and then like out of the smoke, the the tanker follows with, and he's like, it was just the perfect shot to use, mm -hmm. and like even his his uh, uh the jaw jaws movie 
when that shark dies, it blows up and like you can when it's going cascading down, uh, just kind of floating down through the blood, the fin comes out. Dude, you're kind of right. like the tanker. It's mm. a really cool. He's he's. I don't I don't know if he could do that on purpose, but Spielberg was like that was a little pat on the back of just like kind of movie magic luck that uh, I it just happened to get and it happened to work out like that. This is a very these are very similar movies, yeah. man. And it's yeah. it's it's this this evil <laughs> like that you just an evil from something that you never thought you'd have to be worried about, and it just it's they overcome it. They've been torturing them the whole. It's a, it's such a cool little correspondence between the two movies one thing yeah. we didn't say in jaws actually was because uh, well because jaws blows up and this tanker doesn't is that underneath his door his one of his fins it did it did have a tattoo that said flammable oh nice so we did he we did kind of redeem ourselves in right. that in we that knew. aspect we knew yeah no so i knew all about he had that kind of like yeah. i thought it was like a reverse tramp stamp that jaws had yeah like yeah it's so like right above his dong yep yep you know it was a fire yeah. emoji yeah with a fire emoji. <laughs> That's how we got emojis. You know that? <laughs> it's <was> lit, dog. <laughs> Where'd you get that ink, Bruce? <laughs> uh, well, hey, one last theory, though. Yeah. Um, when that truck goes off the cliff, the door's open. Yeah. The driver's side door is open. Yeah. Which tells me that trucker definitely jumped out of that truck. If man can do it, this trucker can do it. Do you know the ser- the theories behind it or the story behind it no. actually? Well, yeah, I mean, wasn't it I mean, like an actual guy driving the Carrie, truck? Carrie the Lofton. <laughs> oh my god! They didn't have a way to do it any other way because it was it was supposed to be a mechanism, right? That was like going to keep this ghost riding truck, right? So it could they could ghost ride this thing right off the cliff. Yeah. Well, it was malfunctioning that day, and Carrie Lofton had other places to be like the next day, <laughs> and he was like, "Fuck it, let's go." Get the cameras on, get it going, and he says, "I'm gonna jump out at the last minute," and he does. <laughs> Fuck, so he badass. actually jumps out of this truck before it falls off a cliff, and 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 they shot it, and then they do say Spielberg shot that last like there was it wasn't oil. He confirms that it is blood dripping from like the steering wheel or something mm-hmm. like that, so he thinks he's dead. He just got hurt when he hit the car. Oh, he just, bu- <laughs> he just bumped glass. his head. Yeah. He just needed some aspirin. Yeah, he's had oh, you bumped your head? Oh, he had, let me blo- he had bloody whiplash. <laughs> How far away is man from civilization right now, and what is he going to do? <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of cool. I love it. It's, the, it's like it. the thing kind of, you know. It's, he's going to watch Or it's that like sunset. them in Jaws swimming away. Yeah, just exactly. Going, well, I don't know. We as the audience, as well as uh, David Mann, is just left to sit there and be like, well, fuck. No one's gonna believe me. <laughs> I lost that crazy. client. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> I like, probably I lost my wife too. Totally lost that client. I'm gonna have to go home and try to explain this to my wife. She isn't gonna believe me. She hates my guts. She doesn't even like me right now. My kids. Well, <laughs> I don't even know if they're mine. Yeah. Well, David, you're gonna come <laughs> home. You come home and you're, what do you what what kind of story are you gonna tell me this time? Huh? Yeah. Like a crazy truck driver was trying to run you off the road for 24 hours. Is that what's gonna come next? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Wait, really? Yes. How did you know that? Did you put him up to this? No, it's been, I, it's been on the news. They have the news. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, news. real real news, no bullshit was covering the story. <laughs> real news, no bullshit was covering the Davy story. Davy Jr. needs fed. I don't care what you say. Just, Clean yourself up and get to dinner, okay? Please. Uh, thank you. Mike, did I ruin your fan theory? I no, there's oh, okay. there's no fan theory. He was, okay. he's there and he kills him. Yeah. Like but he got the job done. Uh, yeah. Good. Cool. Got him. Well, you boys, we have dissected this with a modern eye. It's time to give it a modern day rated AJ. You had never seen this movie before. Where are you at on this for a rating on the grand scale of things? This is tough. It's really tough because it is really intense and it is it is a terrifying concept for because I I do love a story that takes something as mundane as uh, what is potentially just like a, a drive that you've maybe made like 50 to 100 times already and having it completely derailed by um something like this i do think that that's very terrifying i think that uh i would almost like to see the shorter version of this movie maybe okay um maybe you know there's there's some stuff about it that I, i do think it it does draw out very very it draws out for a long time. There are parts that are drawn out, and that being said, somehow I don't mind the pacing of it, which Ooh. is which is a weird thing. Um, but I, I like, I, I feel like I'm watching 
a Ray Bradbury short story mm. is the way I feel about this movie. Um, and, uh, and I love that. I love like this kind of, you know, fiction. And I think, I think for what it's done for, for movies, for Spielberg, for, um, what's kind of come after this, I, I, I do enjoy it. I will give this, <clears throat> I'm going to give this a 6.3. Six point three, Sean. What about you, man? Uh, I think this is the best movie Hitchcock never made. Cool. Uh, w- as well, at the same time, it. being the best Spielberg movie no one has ever seen yet. Yep. Yep. Um, I think people need to see this movie for sure. I think it's incredible. I think it's almost like even his being being his first film, he's never missed a step, even though you know it's it's the first outing. You know, yeah. it's his first feature, but it's pure Spielberg. It's it's him. And his love of Hitchcock, and I, I like what you said, AJ. It's it is like a almost like uh, extended Twilight Zone episode or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, of just that paranoia and especially that inner monologue. It's like if Black Mirror was made in the seventies. Yeah, Dude. definitely. You know okay. what I mean? Um, I I think that the the, the chases do get overextend their stay a little bit here and there. It, I do kind of feel the length a, a little bit. <clears throat> doesn't really do it much for me or take me out of it because it does kind of amp up every time you you kind of feel like that. I feel like it's every time I found myself feeling like that, I'm like, oh, it did it did something else where it, to excite me, you know. Um, I think it's great. I think it's it, you know it's fucking Spielberg. It's a masterpiece. I think it's an eight point one five for me. Eight point one five for the Shauner. I'm I'm in there, Sean. I think you nailed it, man. I think every I'm gonna shout this movie out to everybody and be like, have, have you seen Duel? fucking awesome because i know you have it it's like i mean no one has seen this movie and i don't understand why we don't talk about this more often this is a really fun movie it's shot beautiful it it's it's interesting it's short i think about i love about these 70s movies we're doing is like 90 minutes like Mm -hmm. it is i so many times we're like two and a half hours like shit (laughs) water world man oh my god ulysses cut these movies are cut (laughs) (laughs) they're so consumable and this movie's so consumable and it's like there's no music it's just sort of like even that sound at the end where it's like yeah like i love it I'm going to give it a 7.9. Nice. Uh, executive producer Starling says, knowing that this movie has very little dialogue, I paid special close attention to the radio show and commercials being played. I know they're imp- they are important as Steven Spielberg selected them, and it seems pretty clear that David is identifying with whomever is talking about having no power in his home due to his wife. I'm going to remind my aunt her movie vote or her movie fun fact 30 years ago was wrong, <laughs> and there is, in fact, more than two lines of dialogue. His engagement with the truck driver is pretty early on in the film, and while we've all met D-bags on the highway, this truck looked like the prequel to Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> we should all follow that one driving rule. If someone's driving a beat a beat up ride that no one could tell if you ding them, it's best to leave them alone. <laughs> they have the leverage. After he wins on the highway, he rings his wife, who said she was practically R-worded by some some asshole while her husband did nothing. Um, foreshadowing much? Mm. He really stood up to that mechanic about the radiator belt, though, huh? <laughs> At this point in the movie, I'm starting to realize how 12-year-old me felt. We should be rooting for him. The truck driver is a prick. The wife is a nag. But he's played as, as such a nebbish guy, I rarely get behind him. Is that just me, or is that the intention of Spielberg? Mm. When he gets to the diner, it's like, if he just stays here, everything will be okay. (laughs) But even the folks at Chuck's Cafe aren't on his side. You know those people who are a little odd, but they never seem to make choices to make their life better? That's how I felt when he ordered a cheese sandwich on rye with water. He's just odd, even the way he talks to himself. I agree. Like His his inner dialogue is like, well, what if they did this? Sounds different, right? So David can't seem to do anything right. Even the bad guy saves the day by pushing the bus. And for a moment, we can think, is the truck driver really bad? Was all this blown out of proportion because David was annoyed with the truck not moving fast enough and everything just escalated from there? And then in 60 seconds, we find out, no, this truck driver is the real asshole. My snakes. (laughs) For, for a moment, it seems like if he stays on that mound of dirt, humiliated, this could all be over. Meanwhile, I ask myself the question, could this whole thing have ended earlier if he had just turned around and went the other direction? This roller coaster <laughs> ride gets more and more intense until the radiator finally gives and the truck driver goes over a cliff where presumably he dies and waits for Th- Thelma and Louise to land on his corpse <laughs> two, two, decade, two decades later. 
<laughs> Why do I have this weird feeling that he just snapped after killing this truck driver and he's going to go home to that nagging wife, mm. put an axe in her skull, and go full Norman Bates? He's had a full taste of adrenaline. David no longer holds in his aggression. I bet he can drive over 60 without concentrating now. I'm going to give this movie a six. I think for the time, it was probably a fantastic movie, and I would encourage others to see it once, but I don't know when I will look for it anytime soon. P.S. Can I punch an old lady in the face for not calling the cops? You are allowed. We will allow mm -hmm. that to you. Mm -hmm. Equal opportunity punching around here. So, my friends, that's going to take us to a 7.09 in the grand scheme of things. On our modern day ratings, a 7.09. Not that great, but it's pretty good. It's actually going to fall in at number 75. That's right below Fast and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> right above The Mummy is where we're putting that. Above The Mummy? Right above The Mummy. Wow. And you guys did, hated the mummy, huh? Oh, uh, I don't think we liked the mummy as much as you did. <laughs> I think I liked the mummy. Actually, would you like to go back to the mummy yeah, and we'll I find out? I want to find out. Yeah, pretty sure I Here, liked the mummy. Let's find out I what's think going you did. on. In the you mummy seem here. like a mummy guy. I'm a mummy guy. All right, so um, well, actually, you I'm know, Sean, you, if you say you love it, you gave it a seven point eight. Damn, uh, that's not that great. AJ seven point one. I was a six point oh. two. I brought that down. Sorry. Okay. Wow, dude. My bad, everybody. Wow. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. Summer of seventies continues. We got Blazing Saddles, followed by American Graffiti. If you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Summer of 70s was rolling deep then to The Warriors. Yeah, Go back and listen to that episode. That is an awesome that episode. Fun. I think about that was another movie from the 70s that I have not seen that I now choose and cherish, and I love that movie. I love this movie. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. We love all movies. Well, most movies. Uh, guys, and we love that you are listening while we uh, appreciate most movies. So thank you so much for listening. Make sure you are uh, leaving us a little review while you're listening. You can do five stars on Spotify. Leave us a review uh, on Apple Podcasts. Check us out on all the social medias. Just search for Confused Breakfast. It's at Confused Breakfast just about anywhere on social media. And uh, we appreciate you checking us out on YouTube as well. Uh, we know you're watching on YouTube. Check it out. Go to confusedbreakfast.com and look at our merch. You can get some shirts. You can get some cozies. I think you can actually get those little tchotchke uh, keychains with like the license plate. Yep. Oh, but yeah. they say confused breakfast as well as your you name. You get and, a confused and, breakfast license plate. Holder. Yeah, and, oh, and yeah. where you're from, and just put the, put all of those on your car, and you'll yep. be fine. Nice. Um, go to our same damn website and see all of our ratings of the movies we've covered. Uh, we see our individual ratings and uh, our collective as a show. I love you. Yeah, support all our sponsors that support the show. We had every plate. And Cedar Ridge today, they have stuff in the show notes. Go click that. You'll love it. Uh, directly support us, patreon.com slash confused breakfast. We are produced by the Upload Media Group in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We got Craig on the controls. Craig, Craig thank you so much. Uploadmediagroup.com. And we are part of the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Learn more at cloud10.fm. We are out of here. So long, suckas. Get on now. Drive safely. Yeah, drive safely. Drive and safe. come again. <laughs> All right.